There's no time. No. The time is... 13. O'clock. Again, it's Saturday, We're motherfuckers. Back. Yeah. I am so tired. <laughs> yeah. And we're like twelve we're like twelve subscribers away from hitting ten thousand. Something like that. Something we like may that. have already hit we didn't hit it yet, have we? No, getting you're close. you're looking at that. We're we're so close, you guys, to getting ten thousand. I don't even 000. know what we're gonna do when we hit ten thousand subscribers. I'm know. just so excited about it. I, I feel know. like we should do something. I wish I had confetti or some shit. Yeah. Or balloons. I don't know. It's going to be a good case today. This is going to be a case about uh, damn porn star murder. <laughs> I was going to dress up because before... We were discussing this yesterday. <laughs> I was going to start this new thing where I dress up in a costume, each one related to whatever... Related to whatever the topic is. Right. So what You I should was, totally do that. This one's, this, was, this one's related to John Holmes, so I was just going to take a some socks and fucking roll them up stuff them in my pants and have that shit like coming around here like this going around the yeah, side yeah I said we're talking about John Holmes yeah. so you need a 13 inch that would have been 14 my, inch I can't remember that would have been my John Holmes costume <laughs> just have like a damn peach and throw it down through a tube <laughs> sock and fucking braid it so you got some girth to it put that shit in your pants and I'm, I'm right handed so it goes off to the left like that and you yeah, have it you dress to that side. That's yeah, what they used yeah. to say back in the right. old days. Right, you have that peach to hang. I don't know how it. I know that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that fucking that'd have been awesome. But I, I, I backed out of it. I was like, nah, I'm not. You gonna also do need like John Holmes' terrible hair. Yeah. And also his terrible smoked sunglasses. Well, yeah. it wasn't just him because everybody had that terrible shit yeah. like in the fucking seventies. So it wasn't just John. Actually, Holmes. Actually, I, I was thinking about just uh, another thing that I could have done is just. Dress up in a costume that is in no way related to the fucking subject. Which is kind of more what I would do. That that would even be better. <laughs> like just show up with my Hulk Hogan mustache and a fucking bandana and just and don't a say anything about. It. Yeah, and fucking horn rim, <laughs> fucking yellow glasses and shit. You know, Hulkamania stuff. You know what why I mean? Like, why? I'm not wearing and a costume. And not even fucking mention it. That'd be. What are you talking about? Too. These are just my clothes. Yeah. That's kind. Of, that would be actually really funny. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't be funny now because we just said about it. Yeah, so we're trying. We're gonna try to keep the show <laughs> upbeat and fun today. I'm, I'm fucking gonna start pounding this liquor. Everybody's pissed off, so we're gonna fucking just go ahead and. Uh, I'm not pissed off. I'm just sleepy. Yeah, sleepy and fucking. <laughs> Cause you woke me up. Yeah. Do you know what he did this morning, you guys? He woke up like I very specifically said last night. I watched a movie that we're gonna review tomorrow, like on Shutter. Oh hey, I got my new Shutter shirt. Can you guys see it? Yeah. I got it from Fright Rags. It's underneath all them boobies. It's, well, it's not underneath okay, all Okay, on boobies. top of it's them. Over, it's on top of okay, the boobies. Okay, all right, yeah. But yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's a very nice shirt. I got, I got yeah. because I'm, because so I So you got the banner going, you can't see it, see? Well, wait, can't hold see on, your hold boobs. on, hold We're going to have to fucking raise your, sh there you go, raise there you your, go. there you go. It says, look, it says so yeah. good it's scary on it. Yeah. I feel like, I got a medium, but it's like too, it's big. Yeah, they're big. It's big, no, I mean the shirt is big. All right. Douche. Yeah, but the shirt, the shirt actually looks a little bit like a large. It doesn't look like a medium to be. I know. Well, that's the thing. Well, see, I usually, I mean, normally, I if people are like, okay, well, it's women's size, I usually get a small because I don't want like a big baggy tent kind of shit. Mm -hmm. um, that's just my personal preference. Yeah. But sometimes I'm like, well, I've got a couple of shirts that said they were small and they were like really small. Like I can still wear them, but you know, it's like they're, I look like a baby shirt. So I said, well, I'll get a medium this time. And then the medium's too big. But it's all right. It's comfy, at least. But um, I just totally forgot where I was going with that. Oh, so I watched a movie on Shudder. I watched some more Halloween Wars because Halloween's every day, motherfucker. And I'm not ready to let go of Halloween yet. So I'm still yeah. watching that shit on Hulu. And I specifically said, I mean, Saturday is kind of the only day that I get to sleep in. You know what I mean? Because we don't do the show till 5. Um, you know, I don't get up early and go work out or whatever like I do during the week. So I'm just like, oh man, it's going to be so awesome. Maybe it'll rain and I'll, just, I'll be sleeping. It'll be fucking cool. I woke up at like 530 because I had to pee like usual. And then Pookie jumps on my face and I'm like, okay, whatever, go to bed. And then I was trying desperately to go back to sleep. And then you, 
woke up and then yeah. I could hear you fumbling with your headphones yeah. and like kicking and whatever it is that you do. I and then all of a sudden yeah. you said very loudly, growth. Yeah, growth. And yeah, I was and I like, yeah, that growth. I was yeah. so angry. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was trying that to was sleep weird. in. I remember. Yeah. Why do you do these things to me? Why? I was waking up. <laughs> been, and I have, I have not woken up all day all long. Right. I have had so much coffee, so I'm like super caffeinated and super tired at the same time. <laughs> I was waking up, all right? <laughs> I was halfway in and out of sleep. I was fucking real sore, you know what I mean? From like the, from like the two days before workout, you know what I mean? I was sore for a while, but then like you get this weird stiff limb feeling, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's the, it's the feeling that you get when you're growing. That's what it was. And it has, whatever he thinks, it has it to come, come out of his mouth. Well, I was mad about it. <laughs> All right. And it was happening as I was waking up. I went, growth. God damn. <laughs> I know. That's exactly. And, then it, and I was like, God damn it. And then I, I was trying to go to sleep. Then I, sa- I, was I sat like up. I dozing and it like woke me up. I sat up. I said, fuck it. I'm going to take a shower. Because there's no way I was going to go back to sleep. I went to sleep early. Well, yeah, I did too, but I woke up a bunch of times. Right. Like during I had the night. like I had like kind of, <laughs> I had kind of like locked up, like I was fucking real stiff. You know what I mean? And it's from it's from that shit that I take. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's on you know, so many hormones. I'm always I'm always on some. Dudes so, are so hormonal; they should not, not be allowed yeah. to run shit. And it like <laughs> <laughs> growth. I was like, really? Really? And then I got up. I told you last night that I was like so excited that I could sleep in on Saturday morning. Well, it's like it, go, didn't it, go, it goes back to my, to my fucking, um, my, my, uh, what do you call it? Tourette syndrome? It, yeah. I don't know what it is. It's, <laughs> it, it has to do with the hemispheres of my brain. They're highly integrated. They're not set. They're not separated very well. You know what I'm talking about? Sure. So my spatial awareness, my verbal acuity and all that shit, they they interact a lot with themselves and sometimes like what I'm thinking comes out. Always what you're yeah, thinking comes right. out. Pretty much if always. I'm relaxed. Yeah. If I'm relaxed. If I'm fucking doing something and real into it, then no, because cause it's kinda like it kinda I get start getting real disciplined and it all kinda comes together. But when I'm relaxed, it's just kinda I'm kinda like going on all Yeah, you're constantly talking. Yeah. Because it's well, because he has his um because I need quiet when I sleep. Yeah. Um, he does not. He likes noise. Yeah, I have to have noise. So he has to have, like, he has his tablet, and he always, like, listens to stuff with his headphones, like, to get him to go to sleep. Yeah, and I'll react but, to something. But he'll her. react to something, like, on yeah. it. So it's not, like... It's I mean, usually, it's, it's usually cuss words, like, oh, fuck all that shit. Yeah, stuff it's, like, like oh, shit oh, like that. No. But he'll say it, like, in a normal voice, yeah, and, and I'm like, like oh, oh some no. of us are trying to sleep over here on yeah. the other side of the bed, remember? It happens It happens <laughs> as, I start, as I start to relax, and I'm in between awake and sleep like you know what in I mean? the liminal in the, state in the kind of if liminal, you will yeah I'll, it'll start <clears throat> that that's I, that's the time i think all that poltergeist stuff kind of happens sometimes well probably yeah you know it's, and it's, uh, and like i said you're not the first person to have said that when when yeah. you're in like a state where you're not really asleep and not really awake yeah you know, like kind of hypnagogic or whatever yeah. they call it yeah. hypnopompic it doesn't know. it doesn't um it's weird because it's a combination it's like a bunch of voices you know what i mean some of them are my voices. Some of them, some of them are the voices of people that I remember who are who said something to me. Some of them are the voices of characters or something. You know what I mean? Kind of like your my mind is a fucking constant stream of voices. If you understand what I'm talking about, do you know? Do you have that? Sometimes. Yeah. But I hate to alarm you, but that's one of the. Um, I'm pretty sure that's one of the symptoms of schizophrenia. It might be. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? I think it's just, it's just, uh, <laughs> well, my memories are very strong. So if I remember right. something, I kind of see it. Yeah, I got it. And the, I everybody got you. in that memory is fucking talking and, and then the comp, and then, and it usually ha- it's usually very condensed. It's only a few seconds. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not happening in real time. DJ Maniac yeah. says, when I first started listening to the show, I listened to you guys when I was trying to fall asleep. I would not advise yeah, that. Yeah. He says, that shit went out the window as soon as Tom started yelling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is not yeah. a like a sleepy kind yeah. of show. If you want to go to sleep, like listen to, you know, my, uh, my witching hour show or maybe my book reviews. <laughs> Hopefully mm. they're not that boring, but at least you don't have... Yeah. Tom like yelling and ranting every like go breaking it with the shit. Just my smooth, sonorous voice. 
Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so... Well, whatever, you know what I mean? Just, <laughs> you can make fun of me and shit. I'm not call making me fun of you. Or whatever if you want. No, I, d- no, <laughs> I didn't say that you were. I just said I didn't want to alarm you, but I'm pretty sure that no. that's... Is- no, that because, is legitimately. Um, yeah, but I've seen schizophrenic people, so it doesn't look like. Yeah, that. I have too. Yeah, but I'm just, no. I, you know, I'm, no. I'm kind of joking, but. Yeah, you know. no, it's just, uh, you know, you know, like that skinny puppy album, Mind the Perpetual Intercourse. Yes, I do. It's like that. Yeah. You know, it's constant, and and I've also read about it that the, that the hemispheres are talking to each other. Yeah. Things are worked out between the two. Some of them, you know. Some of the shit happens automatically. You don't even think about it. Like if, if an object falls, you catch it before you even knew that yeah, it was yeah. falling. That's, I think, the right hemisphere that's doing that. Or the left. I think it's the left. You know what's interesting, There's... though? I think in general is that uh, the corpus callosum, you know, yeah. the thing that connects the two hemispheres, is actually much larger in women. Yeah. Um, so they're, the two halves of their brains generally um, communicate bet- better Yeah. Um, hmm. with each other than men's brains do. But... I don't know if that's the case in your case. Yeah, you don't think so? I don't know. Mm. It's hard to say. <laughs> I was just... You are a special case in all, in all yeah, regards. In all regards. Oh, thank you, Aaron. Thank you so much. Happy Saturday. Saturday. Happy, Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Okay. Thanks. Thank you so much. No, I just fucking woke up saying growth. That's what I was thinking about. That's my next t-shirt. I'm going to have growth. like a little cartoon growth. Tom going like this, going Growth. growth. And then me, like, over here, like, all sleepy going, yeah, yeah. Ah, I so wanted to go back to sleep. Well, I was fighting it. <laughs> Growth was fucking me up. It had me all fucking stiff and shit. You have to be there. You have to be in my shoes at the time to understand it. You know what I mean? I, I gotcha. I gotcha. I think, also, I think also growing up an only child has a lot to do with it, too, baby. Because Maybe you're so. your own interaction all the time. Mm. You know what I mean? We've kind of talked about that before because you had a much different experience growing up than I did. I was only yeah. an only child until I was four, and then right. my brother was born. No, I was always an only child. And so I have three siblings, right? all younger. So you basically had to, you know, it, it, and, and I actually really get along with all my siblings. They're all very, we're all very similar, which is weird, even though we're like really like far apart in age. Um but you really had to, it had to be like a whole negotiation of like what shit was going on. You know what I mean? Yeah, not with me. We didn't fight much, though, yeah. me and my siblings. I don't remember us fighting all that much. That's not the uh, experience I had growing up. It was well, just yeah, almost kind of like autonomy. It must be really weird. I always thought it must mm. be really weird being an up. So like I was friends with people that were only children. And I just always thought that was really strange. I don't really remember being an only child because, like I said, I was only four when my brother was born. So, well, from my point of view, well, when you're an only child, you're kind of like an island. It's just you. Yeah. You know what I mean. And you get all the attention. Uh, yeah, but they may, that may not necessarily be good all the time. No, it's no. not. So, <laughs> you know what I mean. So it's just kind of like uh, I don't know. It's, it's not, not like normal well, for me. The best thing about having siblings... There's and no I'm, negotiations involved. And I'm not saying that I did this because, like I said, me and my siblings got along. But the best thing about having siblings, other than getting to trade all your Halloween candy for the like, shit you actually like, is if something bad happens in the house, you can go... Doop. Yeah, that one did it. They did right, it. Yeah. Was it me? You yeah. can blame it on the other one. I would never do that because I'm a nice person. But I'm just saying that that option is on the table. <laughs> That's here. all I'm saying. Everybody's here. It looks Everybody's like. here. Got Soph's here. What's up, Soph? DJ Maniac's in here. Fort Drawer. Bead's Nest. Badger's in here. Michael Schaefer. Sheila. Sandra. Michael Schaefer says, I, f- I feel like Elsa's I sound like a here. bowl of Rice Krispies when I get up in the morning. Yeah, you and yeah. me both, man. I know that feeling. Yeah. My Well, my knees have clicked since I was... In my twenties, so it's not anything new, I guess. Yeah. I don't feel any older than I <laughs> than I did. Mm-hmm. Sess B says I'm pregnant at the moment, and it's hell. So this kid will be an only child. I'm not doing this torture ever yeah. again. <laughs> That's what my mom said. Yeah. What? Yeah, and I can't blame anybody for that. Although I do think, for, and I don't know if this is the case in everyone's situation, but. Um, a lot of times, like, it'll say, like, oh, your body makes you forget the pain, so you'll have another one. Like, you'll forget how shitty it was. You know what I mean? Although, I don't know. I've heard, some, I've heard women say that, like, after, after the first one, it's easier. 
each one is easier and easier. Yeah, it depends on the thing. Usually yeah. the first one is the worst. Yeah. Like uh pain wise, like yeah. length of uh you know, length of uh, how long you're in labor, shit like that. Not always, but that's usually the situation. Um and also something that I found that I'm not saying this is necessarily true in mine, but you have your first kid, you don't have fucking know what you're doing. I mean, my parents had me when they were eighteen, so they really didn't know what the fuck they were doing. But I didn't figure that out until later. They from my point of view, they did totally fine. I wasn't I, I never like thought of them not doing fine. So, um, but the more kids you have, like the less of a shit you give, <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause you're like, you go through the first one and you're like super worried cause you've never had one before and you don't know like how it works and stuff. But then like, once you've gone through all the shit with the first kid, which was me in my case, um, you know, you have more and you're just like, oh, it's fine. Whatever. There's just playing traffic. I don't know. I don't care. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of goes in that direction where you're not helicopter parent all the time. So I do yeah. feel like being an only child, like I said, it might be good in some cases because you get all the attention and all the like money spent on you and all the love and everything like that. But in another way, you might have your parents like up your ass 24-7. Yeah, that's usually what, what it is. Which is not ideal. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, either that, or they're, either that or they're trying to fucking groom you for greatness that will never happen. That type of shit. Well, that's another thing, too, is You're that gonna if be you an have astronaut. siblings, <laughs> if you have siblings and you fuck your life up or you don't do what your parents wanted, you're just kind of like, hey, because see yeah. the thing. OK, now I'm going to. Why aren't you a doctor yet? You're 12. Right. <laughs> you're 12. <laughs> well, see, here's the thing. And like, this is bad because I feel like, well, I was the oldest and it's like my mom was always like, you should have kids because my mom loves kids. And I'm not a fan, um, generally. So, uh, you know, but in a way it was good that I had a bunch of siblings because then I was like, I had some of the pressure taken off me because I was just, because my brother and his wife have, uh, two kids of their own and two kids that were, uh, you know, my sister-in-law's kids from a previous relationship. So they have four kids. So I'm just like, look, I'm covered. Okay. I got covered, so I didn't have to, like, worry about it. Like, my parents weren't all like, my, our line is ending with you, blah, blah, blah. So, well, there's, you know, there wasn't any of that. I had somebody else to, like, yeah. take the fucking, to take the bullet. <laughs> Although I will say that my other siblings also have not reproduced because they are, like me, I guess, not, not a big fan of children. I hope, do you know, we have Pookie. That's like, that's like my kid. So, all right. Look like Tila is an only child too, and I think it's yeah, so I, I saw that. Sophie's. I don't think I didn't think Soph was an only child. I thought she had a sister. <clears throat> Soph, yeah, so if you have a sister, right? Yeah, what the hell are you talking about, Soph? <laughs> Soph's trying to claim to be a fucking only child. You're not an only child. I Soph. have one sister and two brothers. Yeah, all younger, like I said, yeah. but they're all in their thirties and forties. She's the oldest. That's not the same as an only child. Not yeah, because like I said, I'm the oldest too, yeah. but I was only yeah. four years old when my little brother was born. The oldest so. child usually just becomes a cop, a cop over the other children. I'll tell that kind of stuff. Yeah. You better do this. That it's I've heard that, but that yeah, doesn't like, that didn't like happen in our situation. Yeah. Um, I actually when my brother was born and he was a baby. Yeah. Because I I think what usually happens is the older kid is like oh shit I'm being replaced by the cute baby or whatever. Um, I had the opposite reaction. Really? Like when my little brother was born, I'm like oh my god. It's yeah. like so awesome. And my family said, you used to carry that little kid around yeah. everywhere. <laughs> and there's like a bunch of pictures of me like hanging out with my little boot, with the little, <laughs> the little boy. Like I used to wag him around all over the place and like play with him and stuff. And like I said, even when we got older, we were like actually, we were actually really close because we were very similar like in personality. We had like a lot of the same interests and stuff. We were all into like punk rock and shit like that. So everybody's talking about their brothers and sisters and shit in the comments. <laughs> it's fine. Tom can't relate. No, mm -mm. he can't relate. Mm. I Tom, love my siblings. Don't even actually. care to. Yeah. I love my siblings. I really do. And mm. like when we all get together, like I said, it's really cool because there's like a weird like synergy. Like we all like finish each other's sentences and stuff. It's like super creepy. Mm. And weird. I know that all siblings aren't like that, but we are. Even though we're very far apart in age, which I've heard is very unusual. I'm glad I didn't have to go through it. I. I no, it's a, it, it's a pleasurable experience. I don't think I would have liked being an only child. I don't think I would have liked it. I yeah. don't know, man. I liked it. 
<laughs> well, yeah, like I said, it depends on the yeah. on the per like I don't know. I'm don't... I, I feel like I'm kind of a loner nowadays, but it's like I feel like I'm glad that I had that experience. I didn't have to up. share anything, you know. Fucking growing up in Brazil, it was just me. See, I didn't so, mind yeah, that. I, I didn't mind sharing with oh, people. No, no, no. I didn't I mind. Wasn't, wasn't big into that because they would they would have divided everything in half or in thirds <laughs> or in thirds. Yeah, something like that. I know, but but the thing is, it's like when. It's hard to explain. I never got that. Um, I never got that feeling that I was being like shortchanged or anything like that. Mm. Like, oh, we had to divide everything. I just never got that. Okay. I mean, maybe other people that have siblings that like had a different experience, but I did not experience yeah. that. Like I said, I always got along well with my siblings. I did. They, it didn't bother me. Okay. So, well, uh, should we get to the case? Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. So before we go any further, I wanted to say a big thank you. I think he's in the comments. If I saw him earlier, I wanted to say thanks to Michael E. for Let allowing us, us to watch the Mandalorian. Yeah. Season two. <laughs> I must say we made it. To, we it's season two, episode three. I We're think on the third one. Yeah. That, what is that? That's now? the one that just came. Yeah. Out. It's uh. It's good. I would, it's, I'm liking yeah, it's it even better than the first, and I really, really liked the first season. Yeah. I'm really liking this one. It's very monster centric. Yeah, lots of Baby Yoda action. It's good. Hopefully, they can keep it up. Honestly, I told I told you this last night. I was like, I would watch a whole show of Baby Yoda doing Baby Yoda shit. <laughs> just like he doesn't he have was, to like talk. He could yeah. just like waddle around and like. They do, got people already bitching. like do silly things. They got people already out that. there bitching that fucking the child was eating the damn frog eggs and that it. <laughs> and Spoiler that, alert. <laughs> yeah, that it was eating the, eating the frog woman's eggs and that that's genocide and that the baby's racist and shit. Fucking are these people fucking serious? Are they fucking serious? People Someone's will, trolling you, people, uh, No, that's fucking... They're, <laughs> they're fucking saying, oh, that's terrible, you know what I mean? Fucking that's... And these are fucking fan people dressed up I did feel... Costumes. I did feel kind of and bad. I was like, what the fuck, Because man? I was like, that's that it's, lady's baby's baby. Yoda, it's, it, it's a fucking TV show. <laughs> all right? It's a fucking TV show. People... I think what it is is that there's so many people out there that live vicariously through television that they, that they get confused and they think television's real. There is no Baby Yoda. That's a fucking doll. There's Baby Yoda's right there. Yeah, it's right a there. doll, okay? And there were no, there was no f fucking frog eggs, you know? It's just a ridiculous. Aaron says Yoda and the eggs was freaking killing me. Seriously, I would, the best part of that I would watch a whole show of that just because it just, it was so fucking yeah, funny. Yeah, just these fucking <laughs> childish... So like, I felt bad because I was like, man, it's like if that was my eggs, I'd be yeah. really pissed. But it's like, it was just so funny the way he was like, so like, covert. Every, yeah. <laughs> I didn't, like, fucking crack me up. It was like Pookie trying to get away with something. Yeah. But it reminded me of that. They, you know, they're, they're, they were showing screenshots from people on Twitter. Fucking, that's terrible. Fucking, you know, the child is supposed to be a being of light and goodness. And he's, it's a fucking baby. He's a baby. And it's another species. He doesn't species. know any better. And the, like I said, that's species kind of Species eat like... each other. It's just food. Well, you the know? thing, well, the thing that and maybe, the baby didn't know anything. It was just sad. That's what I mean. Well, the thing that because you, know? you you kind of said at first, like when he was like looking at, and I hope I'm not spoiling anything for yeah. anybody that hasn't seen this episode. But um, when he was just like looking at the eggs and the tank, yeah, I thought he was gonna do some good shit. You thought he was gonna do some good shit. I'm mean, like, he's gonna eat that shit. Yeah. And then he did, and I was like, see, I called it because well, he was looking at him in wonderment, but he was hungry. <laughs> yeah, he's like, those look. <laughs> oh, those so are delicious. Good. It was just like that pickled, like jar yeah. of pickled eggs they used to have at Seven yeah. Eleven. But yes, <laughs> the Seven Eleven next to my grandma's house. Yeah. But the thing about it is that they nailed that though, because like I said, he's a baby. Yeah. And babies, that's the first thing they do is they just put everything in their mouth. Yeah. They don't care what is. And, you know, I might have told this story before, but one of the funniest stories that I remember from my child, from, you know, when I was younger was when my youngest brother was still like a toddler and we were all at the beach and he dropped a, a cheese ball into the sand on the beach and peed on it and then picked it up and ate it before my mother could stop him. Damn, that's like something baby would do. That's what I mean. Yeah. Babies just, they don't care what it is. They'll yeah. pick up a bug and be like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So I, that's what I thought was funny was that I just thought that was like yeah. ba Baby Yoda being a baby. Like, I'll just stick everything in my fucking face because that's what babies yeah. do. Yeah, and then the man was like, no, don't do that. <laughs> Knock Eat it off. that woman's eggs. And he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Why can't I? Well, like I said, it's just like when Pookie tries to yeah. sneak back into the house with a lizard stuffed in her mouth. It's that same look. And runs past. That's yeah. the same look that Pookie yeah. gives us. Yep. She's kind of, what? I don't have a lizard. I'm not eating it. I swear mm. to God. And then, like, you have to, like, 
Yep. Get it out and then take the lizard outside and the lizard's like, thanks, man. Yeah, yep. it's like that. So that's why I thought it was funny. But yeah, so uh, I just wanted to say uh, thank you, Michael, for, for that. So Michael for... says, I haven't bothered with Star Wars since the last of the prequels. Uh, this is a lot better than... than um those last three movies. I mean, the Mandalorian is super, super Mandalorian's fun. Mandalorian's like real Star Wars. It's super fun. Yeah. It's, it's like, the other and shit, it doesn't, doesn't really have anything to do with like the main narrative from no. like the big Star no. Wars movies. It's just kind of like a, uh, you know, it's kind of like a, kind of like a Western. An extended universe. Yeah. It all, it reminds me of like Star Wars crossed with like Firefly. You know what yeah. I mean? Type of thing. It's, or Serenity. Um, it's, it's very much kind of like um, Lone Wolf and Cub, which is a Japanese. Yeah, yeah movie series i was going to show it to, to, to which Sophie, we reviewed you know but it's four movies and it, take, it takes too long that's something you have to rent one one by one and it's it's definitely inspired by lone, lone wolf and cub which was a japanese samurai movie that had a lot of western mixed in with it and that was shintaro Ka, shintaro katsu's brother was playing the damn lead in it who's this samurai executioner kind of guy with this little baby with his son and they were walking the path to hell and shit. Everybody was trying to kill them. And um, it's that same concept, which fits right in because that's what Lucas wanted. When Lucas made Star Wars, he wanted it to be a mixture of samurai movie and western. And in space. With Flash Gordon, you know. And uh, so, that's right there. That's what The Mandalorian is. I mean, on, on that, um, on, in, season, in episode two of season two, they went straight western with that one. Or was that season? Or was that episode one? No, it was episode two. I think it was. And well, uh, two was the one where he was first the introduced dragon, to right? the. The no. first one was the crate dragon. Okay, yeah, the crate dragon one. It was definitely like right out of Sergio Leone. Uh, good well, and bad, yeah, the they ugly. set up a lot of the same yeah. shot, like the way he came into town, into that good and like, bad, the ugly, or town fucking and all that fistful of, of dollars. You know, it's like yeah. that. Great series, great series. Hopefully, they can keep it up without fucking it up. And like I said, so far we're only three episodes in, yeah. but I'm like, and I liked the first one a really lot, but this one I'm really because I like that it's more like monster centric. I like that they're putting a little bit more emphasis on Baby Yoda because, I you know Baby Yoda is just fucking, yeah we call it Baby cute, Yoda. Man. Everybody calls it Baby. It is not Yoda. It's I know. Just the child. I know. Yeah, and and he. Everybody knows that. Everybody don't, knows. Yeah. Don't don't well okay. actually everybody. Well, yeah. Everybody knows it's not Yoda. It's not Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> It's just another one of the species that yeah. they never. The Mandalorian is trying to bring it back, take it back to to, to its species, to its and he, people, and he doesn't know where that is. Nobody knows where that. So is. yeah, that's He's what season two is. That's like his yeah. quest to like take Baby Yoda back to like to his, to, like, to, his, its, to its home planet. Yeah, and then you know, along the way, he eats people's eggs, gets eaten by a monster. Michael says he's allergic to Disney. He's allergic. to... Yeah, I don't like Disney either. Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, the Mandalorian is good, so. Just saying, yeah. I I don't I don't get all butthurt about shit like like some of y'all people do. Yeah, it's a fifty year old <laughs> baby. It's a baby and it's like fifty. Well, yeah, but it, they age, live until they're like eight hundred or yeah, nine hundred yeah, years yeah. old. Yeah. So yeah, it's gonna be a baby years old, forever. Gonna be a baby. Yeah. Which holy shit, how yeah. annoying would that be? Bad enough you gotta like cart around a kid for a couple of years before they can go to fucking kindergarten. Yeah. Fifty years carrying a fucking baby around. Fuck that shit. Just saying. All right, so are we going to talk about the Wonderland murders now? Yeah, if you want to, you ready, ready to go? I guess. So. How you doing on that drink? You're all right on that. Huh? I have about a third of it left. Okay. All right. It's good. It's it's gotten very watered down for whatever reason. We made them very early. Do you want me to uh, fix that? No, it's probably better that it's okay. watered down. Okay. Right. <laughs> because I'm drinking it. So I have water too, but it's like I'm drinking it really quickly, and I'm super tired. So it's like I might not be coherent by the time this ends. But like I said, I here's something that's interesting. I did not really know much about these murders, and I can't remember. And I, and I apologize. I can't remember who it was that recommended this to me first, because it's been in the topic box for like a while. And finally, it came up on the rotation, and everyone voted for it. Well, most people voted for it on Patreon. So this is the one that we're gonna do. And then when I started looking into it, I was like, holy shit! Why is this not? better known maybe it is better known and i'm just like out of it because i feel like look the you know the manson murders obviously which we haven't done a show about amazingly this crime was a lot more brutal than that one but i guess 
I guess the reason that this one doesn't get as much play is because the victims of it were not just innocent bystanders. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They were all like kind of part of a drug gang. So it's kind of like everyone was like, eh. Right. Well, good riddance. You know what I'm saying? Well, a lot of that goes on and people don't know about it. Crooks kill each other all the time and it really doesn't make the headlines. That's what I'm saying. It happens a lot. But I found this really interesting just because of all the um, connections, all the shit that was going on in L.A. at the time, like this was early 1980s. And also the fact that uh, John Holmes, the very famous porn star, was possibly involved, allegedly. Um, so, you know, th- so I found that interesting. Also, they made a movie called Wonderland in 2003 with Val Kilmer in it playing uh, John Holmes. And that was actually a really good movie. It's actually on Tubi if you want to watch it for free because I found it. And I watched it a day or two ago. And it's actually, once I looked into the case and like looked into all the shit, I watched a couple documentaries. It was like a British documentary about it. (coughs) Um, The movie is actually pretty accurate like to what happened um, and kind of tells like both because there's a couple different stories. Um, So it kind of goes into that a little bit as well. But it's actually like a really good movie. Very star studded. Like I said, Val Kilmer's in it. Fucking Lisa Kudrow is in it. Like uh, Janine Garofalo was in it. Like all these like really kind of famous people were in it. Um, So that was really good. Also, I was not aware, but this was the crime that, you know, that part in Boogie Nights where they go to that, um, where they go to that gangster's house. I think that it's a, the gangster's played by Alfred Molina, I want to say, and he's doing all the, and his, like, Vietnamese houseboy or whatever's doing all the fireworks. And then they, like, shoot everybody or, there's, like, a scene in the middle where they, like, do a big, like, robbery and end up killing a bunch of people. That was, um, very loosely based on the Wonderland murders. Because, uh, the character of Dirk Diggler in Boogie Nights was actually very loosely based on John Holmes, which I was not. I was only like chan- tangential. It was a great movie. I really enjoyed it. I love it, but... Boogie Nights. I really, but, I've seen it lost so many times. I'm going to go ahead and give a shout out to another movie in case you guys haven't seen it. It's called Mope. And Mope is not a well-known movie. You, I rented it on fucking Xbox. I can't it, believe this movie's not a, better known. I loved that movie. Mope is about these. <laughs> it's based on a real fucking case. It's just fucking. Do you remember what they were called? What what their names were? I can't what remember now. It no. was these two. We reviewed the movie back like a few two, months ago. Real fucking low ranking guys, low ranking porn star guys. They're called mopes. Yeah, mopes are just like porn extras. So in, yeah. in that industry, one of them was like a black dude, and the other one was like a was he Chinese or Korean? The other guy. Oh, I can't remember now. I think it was something like that, and and they were mopes. That's what yeah. they did, and they were trying to get, be, get become famous leading porn stars. But these two dudes really didn't have what it took. Okay. And they ended up being in a fucking murder and a suicide, wasn't it? It was, it was a multiple murder. Yeah. And then he killed himself. Yeah. But it's just a great movie. You gotta see it. It's called Mope. Yeah, and it's like it's almost like a black comedy. Yeah, it's got a lot of comedy in it, but it starts going it's real a terrible, fucking, terrible story. It starts it's going like... real fucking sideways. And um, it's kind of like a dark version of Boogie Nights. If you like Boogie Nights, you might like this I one I mean, even Boogie better. Nights gets pretty dark, too, i got to say. even darker. But Mope is, like, much darker. I actually want to get Mope on Blu-ray to add to my collection. That's that's another one that was up there. I really did like that movie a and lot. It's, and it's just like an, a small, well-made, independent film. When, when, we, when I saw it, when we saw it, I was riveted. I was immediately pulled into it. Yeah, me too. And, and it's just the weirdest shit happens in it. You, and you know, it's you might be able to watch it for free. It might be out on Tubi or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's checked. pretty. It's not X rated, but it's heavy R. I would think there's a lot of sex and it weird shit happens. And yeah, then I mean fucking, it's about the porn industry. Yeah, and they don't really like shy away from that kind of shit. It's kind of like a porn version of fucking <clears throat> um uh that martial arts movie that I like. Uh, what was it called? Uh, Which one? This the art of self defense. Oh right, right. Kind of like art of self. It did like the tone of it. The tone reminded me of, but it was about yeah. Porn. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Tim. I, for some reason, I find, I'm not like, I, I find movies about the porn industry like really interesting. Like mm-hmm. it, it, I find the industry more interesting than the actual movies. Is that weird? You know what I'm saying? No. It's not really weird. 
You talking about movies about the industry? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's interesting. Yeah, it's an interesting industry. It's grift, you know, people that look good or sometimes they don't look good trying to make a buck in this industry doing sex. Yeah. And you know that's going to be some wild shit, you know what I mean? It's it's not as weird as it was because when you really look at porn now, most of it is just single women working from their house. Working from their house. Because right. you don't need middlemen. You don't need big expensive Yeah, equipment. it's not like back in the old days when back, you actually had to like make a film. Yeah, and back when you needed fucking, even in the 80s and the 90s, you needed thousands of dollars worth of AV equipment. Sure. You don't have that anymore. These girls can do it with fucking webcam. Yeah. And they don't need any middlemen and they just get all that fucking profit. And of course, you know, the quality in terms of aesthetics, the quality of the girls has increased a lot. You know, good looking girls do that. But man, when I was a kid growing up in the early 80s, only ugly girls kind of did that shit. I mean, kind of. You know, the, the only ones that were good looking were the real bi- big names and they were, they were in Hollywood. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I gotta remember some of them fucking, back in the early 80s when I was a fucking little kid it had these fucking magazines called fucking weird shit like International and fucking Stag <laughs> Stag magazines and fucking looking back on it fucking you can go back and go look at some of that shit <clears throat> from the 80s you know they've people have saved it to you know what I mean for posterity yeah. you look at that girl man fucking that's that's like a crackhead well you the interesting I mean? thing is that if you look at porn from the 70s or 80s which i actually like i said i find really interesting or even if you look at porn from like the 30s and 40s i used to i have a dvd somewhere i don't know where it's at but um i think i bought it at the museum of sex in new york actually but um it just has like all these reels of like porn from the 30s yeah which was actually like way more explicit than you would think if you thought yeah. about the 1930s. Like, they were actually naked and they were actually, like, fucking and stuff. It wasn't like, oh, no, an angle. It wasn't like that. So Especially it, France. Well, yeah. The, fr- the French shit the was French, the French shit. The French in the 20s and the 30s, they were actually doing beast porn and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They had like I said, no, there's nothing new. It's like, no. you know, as far as porn goes. No. But, um, yeah, so I find all of that really interesting. And it's kind of like... One thing that kind of fascinated me was like looking at some shit from the 70s and how a lot of the girls like that were even in Playboy and stuff like that. They had like, well, obviously they had Bush because that was a thing. They had tan lines. Yeah. They had like fucking. Yeah, that's a fetish thing though. So that's. that's no, no, no. Concept. I mean, they had like, well, that was just that like. Was sexy. It was more like natural. Yeah. Like nowadays, everything's airbrushed. Not even airbrushed, but then there's all the enhancements. That too. Breast implants and fucking. So it's like no, so in in a way, like yeah. if you get like I don't, you know, there's not like print magazines to the same extent that there used to be, but yeah, gone. nowadays, like you see a picture of a, even like a celebrity or something like that, like in a magazine, that's not what that person looks like yeah. in real life no, because it's been out, stretch their it's legs been like out. completely like photoshopped. Yeah, they yeah. make their neck longer, they make yeah. their waist smaller, they make their thighs smaller, they make like everything. You know, I'm a graphic designer. I do Photoshop all the time, so it's like I know you know all the tricks, all the shit that they do. It's like they smooth everyone's skin, they take all the blemishes off, they do this, that, and the other. So it's like. You get a picture that's like not so much like a person as like a, a little bit of a cartoon character. So it was interesting to see that like in the seventies they were a lot more forgiving of you know you know the chick had yeah. yeah the chick had tan lines or she had a, like a blemish on her ass or she had like you know messy bush or whatever and it was just kind of like everyone was like oh it was still it, sexy you know what I mean yeah the uh, the the threshold of acceptability was a lot wider back then because the standards were lower I guess you could say in a way yeah but. You know, what's funny is that you can go, you know, porn wasn't legal, I don't think, in the United States until the 70s, maybe 60s. Ooh, might have been. Cause, Honestly, cause um, most I think even not. when John Holmes was working, yeah. I think in a lot of places, it porn movies illegal. were still, it yeah. wasn't illegal to watch them, but it was illegal to make them. Yeah, and then there was weird interstate compacts about transporting them through mail, which meant yeah. you couldn't ship it. Right. So you couldn't ship it to other states. and So you had to, like, there was all these, like, workarounds that yeah, you had to do. Yeah, so it was, it was kind of a, a weird time. Um, but you can go back and find, you know, so they had photography clubs, what they called them back then. That was yeah. a cover. That was a cover for making porn. Yep. And then those dudes would fucking set, buy, sell, and trade the shit with each other. Yep. A lot of it was going on in California, though, started started in the 50s. And they had some gorgeous women in the 50s mm-hmm. um, doing that. Um, you know, uh, fucking famous uh, strippers is the ones that were making them. And they, 
all natural, but very, you know, Russ Myers, you know, double G racks and fucking looking good, you know what I mean? Like, and Bell Star, and they, they were celebrities in their own right during those yeah. days. Yeah, I have, making... I somewhere I have a DVD with like yeah. some, uh, a little, some video clips yeah. of Bell Star actually. Yeah, and in you know, it wasn't really porn, you know, there wasn't really sex going on in most of it. It was just basically nude. It was titillation. Film. Yeah, dancing and rolling sure. around naked on a blanket somewhere in the beach and shit. But you know what I mean. So they they had good standards. They know what a good looking women, what a good looking good looking woman looked like. Yeah. Because they couldn't get them all the time. Most of that shit was out in California with the strippers. Because those, uh, well, I don't even think they called them strippers back in the fifties. I think they were calling them uh, what did they call them. Um, I don't know, dancers, entertainers. Well, <laughs> yeah, but burlesque dancers type yeah. of deal. You know what I mean? It was a way. It, they weren't totally nude. They wore pasties and shit. Yeah. You know. Because can't chew and, a nipple, for Christ's sake. Right. And it was live shows. And um, back in those days, out in this California and Hollywood, and uh, they were they were gorgeous. You know, they were, you know, they, they had high standards then. It's just, you know, depends on where you were. Some of those girls were, you know, they were genetic freaks by today's standards. Well, I've always thought that Betty Page was beautiful. I found She wasn't too shapely to me, I don't think. She... You know, well, that's kinda, your opinion. That's my opinion. I, I, like, I like very voluptuous, you know what I mean? Fucking, and she, she Which is interesting of, because People she's, draw her very voluptuous, but that not, that's not the But in she real really, life, she was actually quite thin. Yeah, that's not how she looked. You know what I mean? They're drawn, I thought her but, face was quite beautiful. Yeah. She had a beautiful face. Yeah. Although I would say, if I, I would, of course, I would say, you know, Barbara Eden was a lot better looking. Yeah, but she wasn't a porn star. She wasn't a porn or, star. Well, but, I mean, Betty Page wasn't a porn star yeah. either. She did, you know, but, BDSM stuff and... yeah burlesque type stuff yeah but um you know the the, the burlesque stars that are remembered today you can you can find them out there you can just google you know fucking those burlesque stars of the 50s yeah and, it looks uh, bell star uh yeah. lily saint Cyr, like yeah. all those type of people and they were the same kind of build that russ myers was into later on when he started making movies you know yeah. like vixen and shit like that yeah russ my i ha i have uh russ myers yeah. Uh, biography back there, and you know it was most of those. And then what was Sa the Japanese girl? What was her name? Something or Santa Satana? Yeah, Maria yeah. Satana. She Zoe. Was, Zoe Satana. Yeah, she looked great too. She fucking, and I think she was all natural. I think, and I think most of them were. Some of them had, you know, silicone infusion and stuff, but most of them weren't. Most of them were bona fide genetic freaks. You know, big boob girls. You know. Yeah, you did have a few of those back in the day. Yeah, they rose to the top back then. Yeah. Because of the rarity. Uh, well, and, you know. and like I said, I think that's kind of, you know, coming back to the topic a little bit, I think that's kind of what happened with John Holmes. You're right. that Genetic freak. Yeah. Yes. I mean, if you're, if you're coming at it from that point of view, right. he was kind of like, he was born in this nowhere town. Um, he didn't really have a lot of skills um, as sure far as work. Dick, but though. yeah, he had a 13, 14 inch dick. Yeah. And um, it's it's weird because like the town he was born, like he was born in some little town. He had married. He had done all this other stuff. And then I guess he got discovered by a photographer who saw him and was like, hey, can we take some naked pictures of you? Because he wasn't, you know, he wasn't a bad looking dude, but he wasn't like anything that would turn your head like in the street or anything like that. He was just like an average looking kind of scrawny dude. But when they found out how big his dick was, they everybody wanted to take pictures of it. And from that, um, he got like a lot of, he got attention from like porn producers that were like, yeah, we need to put you in porn. It doesn't even matter what you look like. You just have like this massive dick. So he basically, because he was married at the time, like I said, his wife's name was uh, Sharon, who was played by Lisa Kudrow in the movie Wonderland, if you were curious. And she, he was basically like this, I discovered what I want to do with my life. I'm going to do porn. And he basically justified it because she was like, oh, so you want to be a whore? That's what you want to do now? And he was kind of like, well, just think of it as me being a carpenter and my dick is my tool. That's basically <laughs> like how he justified it to her. And she's like, not buying it, but okay. But yeah, so he went off and I mean, him and his wife became estranged, like, uh, obviously for obvious reasons. And as many people in the comments have pointed out, John Holmes was actually a giant piece of shit because not only, um, did he like, you know, it would have been fine. Like again, not 
great that he was just kind of like told his wife, hey, I'm going to be in porn. I don't care what you say about it. You know, that's okay. That's forgivable, maybe. But then like later he became like a total coke head. Um, He allegedly participated in these Wonderland murders, which we were talking about. And also, after his uh, career had started to go south because yeah, of the yeah. cocaine addiction, because he that. couldn't get it up anymore, yeah. um, and he got AIDS. That's right. And because everyone in L.A. knew that he got AIDS uh, because of the rumor mill, and it, so no one would hire him anymore. So he basically went overseas to Italy to be in porn movies and didn't tell anyone. Gave everybody AIDS over there. <laughs> and then he was in like a bunch of movies over yeah. there and like yeah. with I don't know if anybody got AIDS because of him but he for sure knew that he had it and went over there and so yeah not forgivable that is not forgivable he was a giant piece of shit mm-hmm. it's weird because like I said when I was in New York City uh, several years ago probably 2008 2009 I think it was and I went to the Museum of Sex there and I think they had they had some like movies of John Holmes or they had like a fucking a thing about John Holmes just because he's kind of like one of the best known porn stars in the U S and like they had that kind of thing. And I guess when I saw that, I didn't really know like what, um, a fucker he was, you yeah. know what I mean? So kind of reading about this crime has really like put a whole new, I got a whole new perspective on the dude. You know what I mean? Cause all I knew before, Oh, he's a famous he was a famous porn star with a huge giant dick. That's pretty much all I knew. I didn't know that he was involved with this shit. I didn't know about the AIDS thing. I didn't know about any of that. So the LA scene back in that, you know, had, there was a lot of bad shit going on in it. You uh, know what I mean, yeah. Not only were they making Big movies, time. you know, not just in Hollywood, you know, where they're just making movies. They were also doing a lot of fucking fucked up shit to each other and stealing mm-hmm. shit. Fucking, you know, somebody mentioned you know Bob Crane and the other John Carpenter. Oh yeah, they were doing fucking weird shit too. You know what I mean? It was it was, it was a bad place. You know, not everybody in it was bad, but a lot of them were. Well, I kind of feel like if you were there time. long enough, yeah, you would you kind, kind of, of get bad. sucked into it. You, you know, know it was I mean? a fucking... everyone was kind of desperate. Everyone was kind of... Yeah, desperate for the next fucking score in terms of yeah. making money. And then they were buying drugs and there was a lot of fucking weird sex and shit going around. And they were pimping themselves out. You know, it was, just, it was a bad scene. And, oh, also, I forgot to mention, too, that John Holmes also used to pimp out his girlfriend. Mm. Sounds about right. Yeah. Much to her chagrin. Yeah. I think she, she wrote a book. about it. I think she wrote a book later. Okay. Well, he got in, he got in with her when yeah. she was much younger, like okay. they do. Because, you know, right. grooming. He just told her it was all just free love. And behind her back, See, he's that's getting what paid. That shit used to he's do getting back paid then. behind her back. He didn't know it. I mean, and in the movie Wonderland, they kind of show that he took this poor girl who I think was in her twenties, like at this point. But I think he got together with her when she was like fifteen or sixteen. So yeah, just saying. Well, there's a lot, there was a lot, always a lot of poverty in California. Yeah, there's and a like lot of, you know, everyone's kind of like trying to get drugs. I get that. And they're all trying to move up I in life. It. One of the things you know, I'm from California and you know, from fucking originally from. Uh, from Carson, you know, which is right there near Long Beach. California was always a place where you'd have fucking incredible riches and then a lot of poverty right next to it. And anytime you and have that, when you have dichotomy that, of a lot of abuse. wealth and poverty, yeah, a lot of side abuse. by side, yeah, that's never a good thing. Yeah, the rich guys go in there and fucking abuse all the fucking poor girls. You know because I mean? they didn't really, they don't they, have much of a choice, really. They, yeah, I mean, no defenses, you know what I mean? What are you going to do? They're like, oh, don't you want to move up in life? Well, come over here and blow him, blow that one, and blow this one. Yeah, you, yeah you that's essentially what, yeah. well, that's kind of what John Holmes was doing. It's like he was saying to his girlfriend, hey, if you fuck this rich guy, he'll give us all this money and we can buy drugs with it. Right, yeah. And she was like, I'd rather not. And he's like, he's like well, and then no he would beat you. the shit out of her. Right. So he was also, he beat his girlfriend up also. Yeah. So, you know. Special. It's, it's called putting the pimp hand down. That's <laughs> some may call it that. Yeah, it's a process. Some may call it you, that. Putting the pimp hand down. That's how they say it. I, I like in, the academic way that you say that. Well, yeah, the, the, back in merry old England. <laughs> you don't think they had a pimp hand in England? Everyone's yeah. got a pimp. hand. Everyone's got a pimp hand. I heard Ireland. I heard Ireland had one of the biggest of all pimp hands. <laughs> Wait, who was that? I don't know. Just, <laughs> let 
me make shit up, all right? I was going to say, that seemed, that seemed random. Yeah. I'm just thinking of like back in the honky motherland, them with their shillelagh. The motherland. Yeah, with their shillelaghs. With the shillelagh and the little fucking buckles on their shoes, putting a fucking pimp hand down on a bitch. You will make us money. Please tell He's me. trying to move up. And then the dude's got a corset on and he's like, you know, fucking in a walking stick and shit. You know what I mean? More dudes should wear corsets, I feel. Yeah, what were those dudes called? Dandies. Dandies, that's right. Dandies. Dandies. And there's always a poor dude trying to look bitch, really Because bitch, if I have to wear a corset to go yeah. out. Yeah, they'd put a corset on underneath their Y'all clothes to, to make, them look more, make them look more streamlined. You know what I mean? I'm rearranging my organs so I can look better. Yeah. So yeah. Someone else can do Back that. in ye old honky motherland. Please tell me that in Ireland, shillelagh is um, slang for penis. I don't know. Is it? I've never heard that. Well, it's gnarled but, up. It's gnarled up and naughty. And that's what I mean. But I feel like it's got a little head. It's got to be, though. I don't know. I want my own. Having so much Irish blood in me, being <laughs> southern and shit, <laughs> I have to get a shillelagh. I'm going to carry around a shillelagh. Just to beat a motherfucker's ass with it one day. Go out to the club and I just... I'm not even going to punch anybody. I'm just going to beat him with a shillelagh. <laughs> like back in the old days. Bow! Yeah. Well, that again cool. ties back to these particular you might murders get off. because they were bludgeoned. You might actually get off. You know what I mean? They might drop charges because... Well, depending wait on Wait a minute, what... hold on. You, wait, you used a you, shillelagh? You used a shillelagh? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. You're good. You're good. Go ahead. Okay, Bro. shillelagh. That's all. Awesome. Case dismissed. <laughs> Your Honor, I, he used a shillelagh, you know, like back in the honky motherland. Everyone's like, oh, fair enough. Yeah, okay, oh, okay, all right. Bitch had a come. All right, it's legit. It's OG <laughs> shit. <there>. OG. <laughs> and you guys know my address. If you got a shillelagh from back in, in the honk, in the monk, honky motherland, I will The pro- monkey motherland. The monkey motherland. I'm over as the alcohol's <laughs> kicking in. I will, go, I will gladly. An hour in, the alcohol's I will, kicking in. I will in. gladly carry the shillelagh with pride in Orlando. <laughs> The old Someone, heart of the Spanish Empire. <laughs> yeah, this is Spanish Empire territory. I will fucking carve out a new niche. Fucking put yeah, this is put Florida's the, totally totally Spanish. It's Spanish like, and Seminole Indians. Spanish and Seminole Indians, but I'm gonna colonize the fuck out of this shit with a shillelagh in <laughs> my right hand. <laughs> You're gonna colonize. Fucking right, man. Fucking have a little with derby your pimp on. hand with a shillelagh. Pimp hand, hand. Fucking have my derby on and fucking have that shit fucking cocked up on the side of my head like that. <laughs> Fucking right. I'm gonna fucking put the O on the end of my, on the beginning of my name. O Ross. <laughs> o Ross. I would probably an O on it beginning uh, anyway at one time. One I point. will give you a hundred dollars, yeah. five hundred dollars, yeah, if you will wear a leprechaun outfit. Fuck, I got a leprechaun. On show. <laughs> I got a. I wear that shit twenty four seven. Okay, no maybe not five hundred. Maybe two hundred fifty dollars. Two hundred. I'll fucking buy. Yeah, I do that. <laughs> Little shorts and stuff. Little, Fuck yeah, little, little shorts. shorts and derby it and has to be jacket. shorts. Yeah, little stripy tights. Yeah, would be good. Knee um, high socks. Yeah, buckle there you shoes. Go. Little buckle shoes. Okay. Little hat. Yeah. Box of Lucky Charms. Yeah. <laughs> Grow my beard out. Little red. You don't have red hair like me though. Yeah, my dad does though. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I don't know if people know, but I'm my actually, dad's a ginger. I'm actually a natural. Yeah, I'm also a natural ginger. <laughs> I just dye it this color because it's probably gray at this point because See of all. But yeah, so man, my drink's empty. I'll get down you you say, need to do something about that. <laughs> I'll finish it. I'll be sitting here talking about it. Michael Schaefer said, "What about gluing fur to your feet and you could be a hobbit?" <laughs> <sighs> you could be a hobbit. Why am I getting okay? All right. Have we even started talking about the crime yet? No, hold on. You really should. You're talking about me fucking dressing up like a leprechaun. See, I told you. I will give you $250. Yeah. I'll give you $250 if you do it. Buy a Let's leprechaun I outfit. Get, I'm gonna get, get the hat, get the wig. Back. You can have a shillelagh okay. if I'm you gonna, want. I'm going to make a, I'm gonna make us a, a, a drink. I'm gonna, I'm Aaron gonna... says, I do miss the Halloween wig. Well, I, yeah, I kind of like that wig, actually. I don't know why, man. I got all these, I got all these fucking teddy pictures after that. Women what? Were, Women were sending me pictures of their breastuses after I wore the wig. Really? Said it looked just like fucking Robert Plant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking with you. I was going to say, I'm what? Fucking, fucking, you didn't tell me that. I'm fucking with you. <laughs> no one's like, oh man, your Willy Wonka hair it gets me hot. <laughs> 
Tila says he needs a gold tooth, too. He really does. I do like that Halloween wig, actually. I still have it. I'll wear it just at random. Like I said, that's actually pretty close to my natural hair color, but I don't know what my natural hair color is anymore because I've been dyeing it black for so long. It's just so much easier. All right, so let's talk about the Wonderland murders. Um, also sometimes called the four on the floor murders, which seems a little dismissive, I guess. I don't know. Um, or the Laurel Canyon murders, which is a little bit of a boring name. So this is a quadruple homicide, although it was actually, uh, intended to be five people that were murdered, except the fifth one survived, which they didn't think that she would. Um, but yeah, so it's four people it took place in July of 1981. Now, the victims um, were all members of, well, they were either members of this drug gang in L.A., which is called the Wonderland Gang at the time. Just Wonderland because that was like the name of the street that the um, house that they dealt out of was on. Um, but one of the people was like, well, actually, three of them were in the gang. Two of them were like just like a drug, like gang adjacent. So they weren't like actually gang members, I guess, if you want to call it a gang. So I think that's kind of the reason why, thank you, that's kind of the reason why it's not um, given the same, I guess it's not given the same cachet, maybe if that's the right word to use, as like the Manson family murders, because, I mean, the Manson family murders, obviously, like all the victims are just like innocent people, like these people just like busted in their house at random and just like, you know, brutally murdered all these people. The Wonderland murders were kind of a little bit different because, you know, the people that were victims, and I'm not saying they necessarily deserved what happened to them, but um, the people that were murdered were not innocent victims. Let's just say that. Um, the fact that they were targeted was because of some shit that had happened like a couple days prior to the murders. Like it was like a retaliation type of shit. So that's what we're, uh, you know, going to. So let's talk a little bit about, before we get into the murders, let's talk a little bit about the Wonderland gang itself. So basically, this is a group of drug dealers um, who were very kind of high up in the whole uh, cocaine trade in the late 1970s and early 1980s in Los Angeles. Um, now, the home base of the gang was at this like townhouse on Wonderland Avenue in uh, Laurel Canyon uh, in LA. And so th this house, and it's interesting because, you know, the person that recommended that we do this uh, case has said that they've been to this particular house or they've seen it. I guess this house is one that is kind of like a magnet for ghost hunters just because people, you dropped your glasses there. Um, it's a I magnet for- of, I can take care of my glasses. Well, I'm You don't just... need to tell me that I dropped them. I saw them. <laughs> I saw them fall, Jenny. I saw them fall. <clears throat> okay. I'm, I got this under control. Mr. Left the stove on. Mr. Left the coffee pot on all night. Hey, man, Mr. I'm juggling a bunch of shit at once. I'm juggling a bunch of shit at once. <laughs> shit happens. It does. I'm just changing the name. Yeah. But yeah, so... Um, yeah, so they said they'd been to this house. It's like It's kind of like a townhouse, right? And I guess it's one of those places where everybody that wanted to go get cocaine mainly um, or heroin or whatever that's where all the dealers were hanging would out. go to this place and that's where you would go to score. And it had been like that for several years. That's kind of where all the gang members uh, hung out. So even though they were kind of like all up in the cocaine trade that was like, I think as far as I can determine, the Wonderland gang were actually... Um, mm kind of the main go-to people for like the cocaine trade in that time period in LA, which is saying something, I suppose. Um, so interestingly though, even like a bunch of their members were actually heroin addicts, not cocaine addicts. Mm. So I don't know. I don't know if they were so much selling the heroin is like just, they were doing it themselves and then selling the cocaine. I don't know. But yeah, so that's kind of the thing. So, uh, as I said, the house is still there. It's at 8763 Wonderland Avenue in uh, Laurel Canyon, Los Angeles. And it's still there. Like I said, a lot of ghost hunters go there because hmm, all these people got murdered there. And it's supposedly fucking... Hmm. So, it's two bedrooms. Now, the house was actually rented at the time 
by Joy Miller. Joy Miller, um, she was the girlfriend of this dude, Billy Deverell, and he was also uh, a member of the gang. Now, Joy Miller, I guess she had been kind of like a successful person, but she got breast cancer and had to have a double mastectomy, I think. And like, so she was uh, an, also a heroin addict and she kind of, so she kind of like fell into drug addiction later on in her life. So I guess that she just kind of, I don't know if she did it willingly or if it just kind of happened or whatever, but so she was, you know, holding the lease on this house and like letting all these people hang out there, like as, you know, drug dens kind of like do. So um, at this stage, there was this dude named David Lind. Now he was originally from Sacramento. Now the summer of 1981, like prior to the murders occurring, um, Ron Launius, who was kind of one of the Hyatt members of the gang, and we'll kind of get more into their backstories in a little bit. He actually called David Lind because they had known each other in prison. And he was like, hey, we got like all this cocaine distribution business down here. We need some help. So just like it's like the drug addict LinkedIn, I suppose. So they're all kind of like, hey, come down here and help us deal drugs, you know, like you do. So that's what happened. So David Lind comes down. And uh, they're all staying at the same house. Now, John Holmes um, was kind of a peripheral. He wasn't in the gang, but he was like a peripheral member because he would hang out at this house all the time. Now, like I said, I don't know if a lot of people know because John Holmes, like I said, very famous. Um, he was in a, a whole bunch of porn films in the 70s and early 80s as a private investigator character called Johnny Wad. Yeah, Which, sounds familiar. Can we please come up with a better name? Yeah, than that? yeah, sounds familiar. Porn names are so terrible. I think I remember that name. Yeah, well, he was in like what, like a thousand movies yeah. or something. Like he was in like a ridiculous. That was John Holmes. Just, that did yeah. That, okay. That was his character. That was his character name. Right. And honestly, it was kind of like, well, like I said, if you've seen Boogie Nights, yeah, you know where they try to like where Dirk Diggler, yeah. they're like, we're gonna make you into like a super secret spy, yeah. like a James Bond, except a porn version. Yeah, that was That's what, what they were. About. That's what they were doing like with John Holmes. Like I said, John Holmes was kind of this just scrawny <laughs> like dude with sort of like a white man Afro, this horrible yeah. smoked some big, huge sunglasses they used to have back in the day. He was fucking, he was, but he had looking. a giant dick. He was scuzzy looking. He looked, he looked from what I remember. He was pretty scuzzy looking. Kind of like a, like a tall, thin Ron Jeremy. That's, you know what I mean? About that level. Even I though, guess. even though Ron Jeremy, when he was young, was good looking. He was actually in playgirl and shit. He got fat though later. I don't know what the fuck happened to him, but uh, I don't think yeah. Ron Jeremy was ever good looking. No, he was when he was young. He was good looking. He was kind of fucking muscular, muscular guy. He looked a lot like Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds wasn't good looking either. <laughs> well, that's not what I meant. No, I know, but I'm he just had saying. that same hair and that same yeah. mustache, the handlebar mustache. You know, hey, if you don't believe me, there's fucking pictures to prove it. You know what I mean? Fucking go look. Go no, look. I know. I'm when just he was, when, when, well, when, I guess he's just not my type. Is what I'm when, saying. When when when. <laughs> When Ron to Jeremy was fucking in his prime, he was a respectable looking guy. Um, just saying. I mean, he looks looked like shit by the time I was fucking eighteen. But well, the thing, the interesting thing like, about he it, he was there's... in all the porn. It looked like a fucking hedgehog having sex with these beautiful women. It, it did, like, yeah. They, but like, I, well, the, the thing hedgehog. about porn, though, and even in the seventies. Was that no one was going to see... I mean, porn is largely marketed toward men. And I think even nowadays, like, mostly men watch that stuff. So, it's kind of... Because women usually will read erotica. Like, a lot of women watch porn, too. But it's kind of, like, a different, like, demographic. So, I feel like in the 70s, you know, since porn was aimed toward men, it didn't really matter what the dudes looked like. It just mattered what the women looked like. You know what I'm saying? Like the dude could be just like okay looking or just average looking or whatever because the dude wasn't looking at that dude. Unless it was gay porn, that's a whole other thing. But I feel like in straight porn, it didn't really matter as much. But, well, because like I said, John Holmes, when he first started out, he first started out um, being in like erotic photographs. Like he got discovered by somebody because they just saw him. And I I don't know like how it's happened exactly. But he was just, um, he someone saw his dick somewhere and like some photographer was like, Hey, you have a giant dick. So I'm going to like take some erotic photographs of you. And from that, he like parlayed that into a film career. 
And a lot of the porn producers at the time, because there were a lot of interviews with them on this, this documentary that I saw, and they were talking about, they're like, well, John Holmes comes in, like, because he wants to be in porn movies suddenly, because he's decided that he's found his calling. And they're like, to look at him, they're like, he wasn't good looking. He was just like this scrawny, like, whatever. But then, like, he takes his pants off, just like Dirk Diggler did in Boogie Nights. Yeah. And everyone's like, okay, you're hired. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, there's a great scene on that where <laughs> where um, Burt Reynolds is playing the fucking porn director, says, uh, he says, Dirk, uh, you know, can 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 I see it? And the like, guy pulled it out, and it was kind of like that scene from Pulp Fiction where they opened the briefcase and the fucking <laughs> right. Out. He's fucking. <laughs> that's pretty well, well. According to the interviews that I saw, that's kind of what it was like. Where they like, you see this dude like walking into the office who just looks like this scrawny. <laughs> 70s looking dude well, and they're funny. just like yeah no thanks and then he's like hey check this out and they're just like oh all right what was funny about right. that, about that I, movie, I see what, what you was, i see what you're laying down what there. was funny in that movie though is like if you got burt reynolds fucking li- fucking meat gazing on this motherfucker just gazing and he gets lost in it for a second like he's going like he's going out of body a little <laughs> bit yeah and then he goes thank you thank you thank <laughs> burt reynolds thank was so you. good in that yeah, movie yeah. Thank I love you. that movie. I appreciate too. that. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, that it's it so seemed hilarious. like that wasn't that much of an exaggeration. You know what I mean? Well, because they could just see dollar signs. Like, ching 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 I don't know. Though. Because, I mean, it's having a 13 or 14 inch dick, that's like pretty, uh, that's pretty freakish. <laughs> fucking Burt Reynolds' character, though, is like he had seen some kind of fucking miracle. Right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for showing me that. Yeah. She was hilarious. That's a great movie. You guys need to see it. It is it's a really great movie. Yeah, I love that movie. I saw that in the theater when it came out. It came yeah. out in 1997. Can you imagine? I know. That was funny? a long time ago. Yeah. But yeah, I saw it in the theater and I've seen it like many times since then. Um, so yeah. So basically, John Holmes, like I said, he wasn't a member of the gang. He wasn't a drug dealer necessarily. But as time went on... He became, like, an insatiable, like, coke fiend. He was freebasing and everything. So he was, he would, like, hang out at this house, like, either buying drugs or trying to, like, scrounge them off of people. Because after a while, like, he was obviously, like, running out of money and doing shit like that. Somebody said um, up there that he did gay porn, too. He did actually, like, later on. Like, after, because of his cocaine addiction, um, he became impotent. Um, and so a lot of porn producers in LA would not work with him anymore. And after a while he tried to make a comeback by doing like some gay porn. And I think he did like do a bunch of gay porn type of movies, uh, later on in his career just because he couldn't, but he had done like a whole bunch like prior to that, but it does really seem like his career kind of really tanked because a lot of the producers that they interviewed for this documentary that I saw were talking about. After a while, they're like, he would show up on set and he would just like look like crap. Um, And then he'd be like, "Uh, hey, I have to like go somewhere for a little bit. Like, you know what I mean? And he was just like really unreliable and he was just like, he couldn't get it up and like all this other kind of stuff. So they like kind of got sick of working with him. But yeah, so like I said, he wasn't in the gang, but he was kind of like tangentially. He would like hang out at this house all the time. And he knew like all of these uh, kind of people. So, uh, this gang, the Wonderland gang, not only, like, drug dealing was their main thing, but they also did, um, you know, uh, they would break in to people's houses and they would steal stuff. They would do, like, home invasions and stuff like that. Usually on other drug dealers, but not always. Um, and the fact that they, um, did a particular home invasion on a particularly, um, inadvisable target was probably the reason that they all got themselves killed. So let's talk about, like, before we get into that, let's talk about, like, each of the members particularly. Like, and these, most of these people did end up getting killed, spoiler alert, in the Wonderland murders. So kind of the, I guess he's, like, the head of the gang, sort of. So there's this guy named Ron Launius. Now, he was um, in the Air Force. He was a veteran uh, from the Vietnam era. Now, he had actually been dishonorably discharged from the Air Force because he had been smuggling heroin back from Vietnam inside the bodies of dead U.S. soldiers. So, 
we're not talking about a real quality person is is what I'm saying. Now, also, uh, when he was killed in the Wonderland murders, um, LAPD said that they had 27 open homicide cases that they think that Ron Lonnie has had allegedly committed. So not only was he smuggling drugs back in dead soldiers' bodies, but also he was allegedly responsible for at least 27 murders, or at least they suspected him of committing 27 murders. So he had actually been arrested before. Um, There was a murder in 1973, which was... He supposedly killed, like, a, uh, a police drug informant. Now, there was this whole thing. There was, like, um, a guy that had, like, fucking... He was going to um, be a witness for the prosecution. And then he got killed in a shootout, which was not related to the initial thing. And then that whole situation resulted in the... Uh, charges against Ron Lonnie is being dropped, so he didn't get in trouble for that, even though they're pretty sure that he did it. Okay. Pook um, is outside. Oh, okay. Pook is outside. She better, better be know. good. Yeah. She better be good. I'll go check on her a little bit. Okay. I can't believe it's only six o'clock at night. Yeah. Like, We're an hour is, into it. We're an hour into the show. Hour and 20 minutes. Okay. So, so yeah. Um, so, the same year, though, like he got off with the murder charge. But he was um, convicted of smuggling heroin and cocaine over the U.S.-Mexico border. Um, he got an eight-year sentence, but he only ended up sending, uh, serving three years. Um, you missed it, but I was saying this main guy, like one of the dudes that got killed in the Wonderland murders, yeah. um, was, I thought you would find this interesting. He was uh, in the Air Force in Vietnam, mm-hmm. and he was convicted or was at least um, suspected of smuggling heroin back into the country in the bodies of U.S. soldiers that were coming back from Vietnam. That'd be an easy way to do it. So, eh, If he classic. had access to the bodies. Also suspected of 27 murders. Yeah. So, he was like suspected I, of 27? Yeah. Damn. Like I said, not a not a quality individual Damn. that we're talking about. Like I said. So maybe that's why, maybe that's why this doesn't get the same uh, attention as like the Manson murders because... The people that got killed, I'm not saying people deserve to get murdered. I'm just saying that the people that got killed were not great people. So it's kind of like everyone was like, eh. no one, no one really cares all that much. I don't know. Um, so yeah, Ron Lanius was actually described by uh, a particular police officer that interviewed him as, quote, one of the coldest people I've ever met. And I love this quote. I found this on Wikipedia. This other officer said, Uh, when he heard that Ron Lonnie's had been murdered in the Wonderland murders, he said, and I quote, I suppose they won't be needing many pallbearers. And the dude was like, well, what do you mean? He's like, a trash can only has two handles. Oh. I was like, oh. (laughs) Oh. Get some fucking ointment for that burn. That's a pretty good line. I'm going to have to remember that. (laughs) Something else, yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, so he had a wife named uh, Susan Murphy, who was also uh, present at the time. So here's this other guy, Billy Deverell. Now, this was the boyfriend of Joy Miller, the woman that owned the, or she didn't own it, but she leased the townhouse that they all were murdered in and they all stayed at. So uh, Billy Deverell was kind of um, Ron Lanius's like, second in command, I guess you could say. Now, this dude... Not so much of a shithead as Ron was. I guess um, most people described him as, like, he was pretty much okay. Like, he was a decent guy. Um, He actually just kind of got into the drugs because it was, like, an easy way to make money. He wasn't, like, a particularly, like, psychopathic kind of shit or anything like that. Um, And he also seemed to have something of a conscience about, like, he kept wanting to get out of it. Like, he was a drug addict also. Um, so he had kind of gotten sucked into that lifestyle and he seemed to like feel bad about it. And he did seem to have like regrets about his actions or what have you. I'm having problems with power here. I gotta get, a, I gotta get an extension cord. Hold on. Okay. So, um, so this guy, he had actually had a job at some point. I don't know if he had a job at the time that, uh, all of this shit happened, but he was, uh, he did, he was an overhead crane operator. 
Um, but he was also a heroin addict and he had been arrested 13 times uh, in relation to his heroin addiction. And um, so this was kind of the, one of the reasons that he couldn't get away from the gang, even though he reportedly was not super into it and was like trying to get like turn his life around. Um, so yeah, so as I said, he was like a really bad drug addict and it's kind of in that way, it's kind of sad. Now, David Lind, um, who, this was interesting because in the movie Wonderland, which I just watched a couple days ago, this character was played by Dylan McDermott, who I didn't recognize at first because they made him look like your standard, like scuzzy biker type of dude. And I'm like watching him while I'm watching him talk and I'm looking at his face. I'm like, oh my God, that's Dylan McDermott. Because usually, I don't know, like he usually doesn't play roles like that, I guess. Or I haven't seen him play roles like that. So I didn't recognize him at first. But he's played by um, Dylan McDermott in the 2003 movie. So this dude also kind of a piece of shit, got to admit. Um, he was a biker, which is fine. But he was also a heroin addict. And he was also in the Aryan Brotherhood. Now, he and Ron Lanius had met when they were both in prison. So, in 1981, Ron Lanius had apparently said, hey, we're doing all this, like, fucking drug business down here. Like, why don't you and your girlfriend come down here and help us out? So, that's basically what David Lind did. Now, he had been... David Lind, at this stage in 1981, had been incarcerated many times um, on various charges. Uh, burglary, forgery, assault, and assault with the intent to commit rape. So that's fun. Um, now, this guy, like I said, he kind of... Interestingly, in the movie Wonderland, they kind of portray David Lind at first as almost a sympathetic character because it's almost kind of like his narrative versus John Holmes's narrative is kind of how they um, framed the movie. So they almost kind of make David Lind seem like a sympathetic character at first. And then as the story goes on, he gets like less and less credible, which I thought was like a really interesting narrative choice. It's a really good movie. Like I said, it's, it's on Tubi if you want to watch it. And it's actually pretty um, accurate to the facts of the case. And does a pretty good job of, because like I said, this this murder is technically considered unsolved just because the people that they think did it were not convicted. So they do a good job of like kind of walking that tightrope between saying, look, we pretty much know what happened, but these are like the two versions of what happened, but they're pretty similar. They're pretty similar. And, uh, you know, without saying that anybody did it like definitively you know what i'm saying so they did a good job of doing that so as i said david lind they i don't think they mentioned that he was in the Aryan brother brotherhood in the movie although his tattoos might have showed that i didn't really look but yeah so there was that whole thing now there was this other guy in it named tracy mccourt this guy i don't even remember if they portrayed him in the movie or not but he was just basically like the getaway driver he was actually supposed to allegedly have um, participated in the crime, but for whatever reason, uh, Ron Lanius didn't want him to come in the house. I don't know if he had like fucked up or something. So he's just like, well, you just have to drive the getaway car and like stay out there and shut up. So that was kind of that whole thing. Um, and like I said, I mentioned Joy Miller before. She was the girlfriend of Billy Deverell. She was the one that owned the lease on the house where it all happened. Um, she was actually, um, the Billy Deverell was actually her second. She had been married before to like some high up attorney, like in Beverly Hills or whatever. And she had a couple of kids that were grown. Um, she was actually, um, had sort of become, she was like a normal person, I guess. And then she had kind of gotten sucked into this whole drug thing and she had breast cancer and got her breast removed or whatever. So there was also a couple of other people, Susan Lanius, who was Ron's wife. Um, she was the only person to survive the Wonderland murders, even though it seemed like it was the intent to kill her. I will talk about that a little bit later. Um, and there was another woman there named Barbara Richardson. That was David Lynn's girlfriend. She was 22 at the time, uh, known as Butterfly because of one of her tattoos. Um, now both her and David Lind were suspected to be police informants, although I don't think that that's ever been particularly, uh, you know, established, but they were just like rumored to have been police informants. So 
Now, the Wonderland murders allegedly occurred as a retaliation. A retaliation for what, you may ask? Because these people decided that they were going to rob a dude named Eddie Nash. Now, at the time, Eddie Nash was one of the best known gangsters and also nightclub owners in the LA area. He owned the Kit Kat strip club. He owned like several, he owned gay clubs. He owned like clubs that were uh, geared toward African-Americans. He ga- he like owned all these clubs in the area. He was kind of like one of the main dudes that was kind of like the nightlife dude. And everyone knew he was a gangster, but it was kind of like, it's kind of like one of those things where everybody knows that he's like up to all this illegal shit, but they couldn't really like you know, pin him down on anything and they couldn't really do anything about it because he had so much money and like cachet and power in the area. So it was kind of one of those situations. Now, what ended up happening? They're talking about your MST3 K fucking collection box underneath the I have so many of them. Yeah, she got a shit ton. MST is probably one of my favorite things ever. It's good, but, you know, I'm kind of... She knows all the references. I only know, like, fucking maybe one-third of them. I really only start laughing. I, to me, that's some nerdy shit. It is funny, but... Kind of, I own my nerdiness. It doesn't okay. really fucking get funny until they start singing. When Because when, I, I have more of a musical sense of humor. They'll start singing to some kind of theme song to something, and it'll be in the context that I start fucking busting up. But the rest of that shit... You have to be fucking, you have to understand, you have to be like an English lit or fucking, you have to read a lot of stuff and read a lot of, and well, see a lot of other liked movies. About it. Well, the thing, the thing that I always liked about MST. Classic literature and classic movies and shit, you know what I mean? Well, it's not just that though. I liked that they could, like, one second they could make a joke about like fucking Aeschylus or some like some fucking ancient Greek shit. And yeah. then, like, the next second, they can make, like, a fart joke. Yeah. Like, it's very, like, highbrow, lowbrow. And I like that, that they just, like, don't even make a distinction. Yeah. Like, I really like that about it. Um, I liked those live shows that we saw for the Rip Tracks. Yeah. Live Rip Tracks were I mean, good. Birdemic was one of the Birdemic best. Birdemic was one of the best ones. I, I uh, had a headache from la- my yeah, I had a headache fucking, and a face ache from laughing so much at that one. Live Birdemic and also the live Manos. fucking Manos Hands of Fate. I was just fucking laughing at that whole shit. I didn't think fucking I didn't I didn't like um, the one that I didn't like was uh, Starship Troopers. I didn't think that one was that funny because I like that movie, you know. I like I like that movie. I'm just saying, you know, they're like busting on it. But that's what but they I do, like, though. Yeah, but I like you know I don't think it's a bad movie. Right, but it's got to be a bad movie for me to really enjoy it. Yeah, that's true. You know, what but I mean? they've done good movies too. Yeah. You can always find something to like joke it's about. Better when the, it's better when the it movie is bad. It is better when the bad, movie is terrible. When the movie's very bad. Like Manos Hands of Fate is fucking terrible. It's so terrible it almost comes back and it's and, almost sublime. It horks itself in the in <laughs> it the horks ass. Itself. And you're like, no, it's kind of good. It's so bad that it's good. It's there's genius. something about Manos that I actually really like. Yeah. There's a there's like a weird, like and, creepy atmosphere about it. And and Birdemic, there's something about the tone of fucking Birdemic that is so corporate, cheap, and flimsy that I started to enjoy Birdemic, especially when you got people busting on it. I fucking love Birdemic. The thing that I love about Birdemic, and actually about all that dude's movies, that is dude that, does not know anything about men and women. He doesn't, well, the inter- and well, the thing about it is that he seems like such a nice man and he seems like so genuine and everything, but also I suspect that he might be an alien in a skin suit Yeah. because he really doesn't seem to know how real people talk or real people yeah. interact or anything about think- anything. And I hate to like shit on him because he seems like a nice man, but it's like, watch Birdemic. He's an old, he's a, he's an old, it's so weird. He's an old Asian guy. It's so weird. And having lived in Korea, you know what I mean? A fucking, the Korean, I, I you know, I li- really liked Korea, but I understand the limitations of Korea and its culture. It's a lot better than it, now than it was. But the, the guy who made Birdemic, he thinks that dating between white people is stalking, essentially. Is stalking, all right, one, that that's, white Which, guys get women by stalking them. That's what he actually thinks. And the relationship is almost entirely comprised of her sitting on your lap. 
It's it, so weird. Yeah, it's it's straddling so weird. you, facing it. That that's 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 he's totally into that. That was that. Whenever <laughs> he shows a white couple, it's the dude sitting there and the woman straddling him, and they're not and even that, moving. They're not even moving, and it's just like that's dating. It's so strange. That's dating in his mind. It's so I, strange. Is he Vietnamese? Was he Vietnamese uh, in origin? It was some weird. He might be Vietnamese. I think he's Vietnamese, but he's misunderstanding the Western relationship. Between, between men and women, I, I believe. I don't even know if it's like a cultural issue. I think it's just like a person issue. I think it's like cultural. He doesn't have I, well, any... it's a, it, 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 it's it's everything all rolled into because one. Because I've seen other Vietnamese we movies that of, were completely normal. We're products of our culture, and fucking everybody not only has a regional culture from their heritage, it's also the family culture that they come from in that area. You know what I mean? Like when I was in Korea, not all Koreans were the same. All right. Well, obviously. They're just not. But they all have the same culture. They do. Yeah, it's like, well, okay. it's the thing about and then, the culture that you come from gives right, you yeah. like a series of parameters. Right. Like, but there's always people that are like... And in those not. clubs, you know what I mean? Some of those girls that weren't working in those clubs, they were just hanging out and having fun. They were actually very subversive for Korean culture, 1990, 91. You know what I'm talking about? They were very subversive. They were like, they were like Korea's version of a punk rocker or Korea's version of a of a goth girl or something. They just were. They weren't the normal Korean girl. Yeah. You know. Normal Korean girls didn't like foreigners. They didn't go to clubs. They didn't like any of that music. You know what I mean? They like Korean stuff. So it's just... Which, like I said, fair enough. Yeah. You know, fair enough. It's just the way shit is. All right. Well, um, to me, honestly, the weirdest thing about... Uh, what's it? God damn it. What's his name? James Nyan? Nyan. Right? Yeah. I, I can't remember know. what his name is. He's a weird but he, man. Well, he hasn't just made Birdemic. He made like um, a couple yeah. of other... And Rift Tracks has done them as well. I can't remember what the name of that one was we watched the other day. But the thing that's interesting to me about Birdemic, not so much like the shitty special effects or like the weird stalking or whatever, the weirdest thing to me was like the corporate dick sucking. Yeah. That was very, very weird well, He must me. have had some like, corporate why, Like, why did he think... Solar panels. Solar that panel. that was so interesting that you would want to watch a bunch of like just generic stuff about solar panels. white people in a boardroom talking mm-hmm. about hey we made our sales quota this month it's like nobody yeah. wants to go to these meetings in real life why would I want to watch a movie the movie was a tax shelter about a movie was a tax shelter that. for some company it is not interesting money. everyone hates what about, meetings they try to what avoid about, them what about the movies from that dude you know his name I don't know his name but you know who I'm going to talk about the dude who constantly portrays himself as an alien Jesus computer specialist that comes down to save the earth what the dude that I'm going to fucking let me say it again well, I, I heard dude, you the first time. I just didn't know what you were talking about. He's made several <laughs> films, and he's always a savior figure. And Oh, right, right, right. And he right. comes down. What the and fuck he, is that dude? And he's a genius at whatever he does. I know who you're talking and about. Shit K-Cinema did a bunch Shit of stuff. Shit K-Cinema right? did, did, did a bunch Go of Go watch Shit K-Cinema, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it's another guy. The man's a genius. I and love that dude. Yeah. I need to buy some of his books also. I didn't know that they made British people that good. Badger. Have you seen Shit Case Cinema? Johnny Shit I live Case? in the UK. There's cool people over there. There's I lots of cool damn, people. I hope so. I hope so. I hope there's more of them. There's lots of cool people over there. Okay. I probably met more cool people over there than I've met yeah. over here. <laughs> he's from the hood, though. I got a feeling he's from the hood. Well, it's not really the same. The so hood is not the same not the over hood. there. Okay. It's, right. it's not really the same I liked thing. him. I thought he was, I thought he was hilarious. Was well, hilarious. like I said, it's every time I watch one of his videos, because he doesn't um, post as much as he used to, because I, he's been going like a really long time, and I guess he kind of got sick of it. So he puts up a movie every now and then. Um, but he's also a writer, and so I feel like every time I watch the video, I'm like, God damn it, I need to like buy some of his books. See, they know what I'm talking about. Alien Jew- Jesus computer specialist. And the other guy goes, oh, Brad something. Alex what the Rivera fuck is that Brad dude's name? Something. Like he's, I said, shit case cinema did he makes, like, he's he, done like a bunch of his movies. He makes movies. Yes. And he is always. And he's always like this the savior main, figure shirt. The main, the, he's always the main character and he's always some kind of superhuman. He's either an alien, he's a Jesus-like alien that comes down and he knows everything about computers and he's trying to save the world. And all the women love him, of course. In, the, in these movies and you look at the dude and you're like what you know what I mean you're, come on you know what I mean see and, this is what they mean yeah. when ever okay so like every writer fucking 
uh, you know, shit that you go into. They always tell you, this is a big phrase in writing and screenwriting, any kind of writing, kill your darlings. Don't write yourself into shit, one. Two, don't write your fucking fantasy into shit, unless it's fanfic, that's fine. But if you're writing like a movie or something like that, don't write it so that like, you are clearly the main character yeah. and you can just do everything awesome yeah. without having to learn how to do everything. Yeah. It's like, you're always like, you get all the ladies, yeah. you know how to do everything immediately. Yeah. You know how to, t- it's just very, very, it's, cause you're, you, you end up, being, it's very transparent is what it ends is. You end up being the dude sucking your own dick. I mean, he's sucking right. your own dick on fucking right. camera. That's what you're doing. You know, I mean, you're essentially, kind of you're, you're like, you're putting yourself in the center of the fucking Right. Attention. You're like Bella Everybody in Twilight. Me. You're Every, a Mary yeah. Sue <laughs> at this stage. Yeah. You like, you're the best at everything. Yeah. You don't have to learn to do anything. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to do anything. It's like, nobody wants to read that shit. Okay. Keep it. Like I said, keep it on your fan fiction forum. That's fine. No one's going to complain about that. But if you're going to like publish a book about it. Keep your shit out of it, man. That keep your shit hilarious. out of it. That shit was hilarious. I'm just saying, keep your shit out of it. So I, so I'm wondering about the dude, and like I said, I hate to shit on the dude. Yeah. The the guy that did uh, Birdemic and several Neil other movies Breen? also. That's it. Yes, yeah, yes, Neil yes. Breen. That's yeah, his yeah, that, that's yeah. his name. Thank yeah. you, Neil Thank Breen. You. Thank you very that's much. That's who we're talking. We're gonna about. give you credit for that. That's <laughs> Alex Rivera. Alex, Thank you got her. Neil Breen. That's I did, like name. I knew who you were talking about, but I couldn't remember his name. Yeah. How'd you come up with that, Alex? You, he must have seen it. Well, a lot of people know that dude's movies. I just couldn't that think of it. That dude right there, man. Okay. Although, you know what was funny? I gotta say, I enjoyed the riff tracks of that. Which one? The Neil Breen movies. Yeah, wasn't well, it? Wasn't it a riff tracks, or was that or was that Shitcase Cinema? Well, Shitcase did, did, did it. Too. He's, he's did. done several Neil he Breen. Too, yeah. He's done several Neil, Neil Breen movies. That dude there, man. He said he searched it on YouTube. It was okay. on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, it's yeah. like I couldn't think of the dude's name. It's like yeah. I knew. I was like, man, we watched Shit Cave Cinema. It's like he talks about this dude all the time. Like, what, what the fuck is yeah. that dude's name? Because I was so like tied up in the Birdemic thing and like James yeah. Nyan and all that, and I was just kind of like Nyan. Oh, he must be, okay. Nyan. He that means he's Filipino probably. Nyan isn't that a Filipino? It's Filipino or Vietnamese? He's I can't, one of the so. two. I think it's Filipino. And like I said, I feel bad like shitting on the dude because he seems like a really nice man and he seems like really earnest. Which one? Which James Nyan. Okay, yeah. Um, well, he's an environmentalist. Well, so you know, and that's cool and everything, but it's like I feel like yeah. he's made more movies than Birdemic, and like yeah. I said, Riff Tracks I think has done all of them. Um, because I watched one the other day that they've done. If you, I, it's on Tubi, I think. Yeah. Um, so go check that out if you're into that kind of shit. So I feel kind of bad shitting on him because he seems like a nice man. That doesn't, but, matter. That doesn't matter. We're talking about But the honestly, I don't think he knows how humans work. No. Okay. The, I'm just pe- saying. I'm are just apolo- saying. People are apologizing. Sorry to sidetrack the show. Look, but when you watch the fucking, that movie. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's no, no one, that, no one that cares about this case is yeah. listening anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're like almost two hours in, and so like everyone's checked out by now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They left a complaining comment, and they yeah, went off into the ether. People never fucking talk. So about I'm the not case. worried about it. I'm not. The worried. show is just. Oh, the I show. forgot to tell you. I forgot What's to tell it? you. Just sorry to interrupt, but uh, somebody today, yeah. I can't remember what. Um, it was one of our old shows. Yeah. Somebody commented yeah. that we were Satanists. Okay. And no one should listen to us because okay. of all our swearing and our fucking. All right. Yeah, fuck all that shit. Which I thought was yeah, very like, funny. Right, whatever. I just I just thought I would like mention whatever. that because I thought it was very funny. The so, thing the thing with the uh, with yeah, the with the new year, the, the guy who did Birdemic. What astounded me is me and Jane were watching the shit and I was just like, what what? Look, man. I consider myself to be a well-rounded guy, I guess in a way. No, maybe I'm not well-rounded, but I've I've been around the fucking block. I know a lot of shit. I've always, I've always been. I would say I've always been successful with fucking women, and um, you know, if if I liked them, I could usually hook up with them. All right, Um, I might break up with them later. They might fucking dump me, but at least I hooked up with them. But anyway. 
We the win. dude, I've never, ever picked up a woman by fucking what, what I saw in that damn movie. The dude's sitting on a bench and sees a woman walking and then follows her home. Because seriously, if a dude did that to me, I'd door. be calling the police. Yeah. There is a dude following me. Please yeah. help me. And, and and I consider myself to be kind of, especially in, in my youth, aggressive. If I saw it and liked it, I'd go after it. I would never, ever follow a fucking woman home and because knock on her door. Because it's creepy. And he go, he knocks on her door in that movie and goes, you know, I was just sitting on a bench and saw you walking by and I had to meet you. A woman would call the fucking cops In on which you. case, I would mace you yeah. and then call the police. Or yeah, I would right. mace you and then hit you with a hammer. If you were in a red and state. And then call the police. If you were in a red state, you shoot a motherfucker. Bam! <laughs> Get out of my fucking... Well, <laughs> hammer's better. It's more up close. It's more up close. Yeah. But yeah, like I'm saying, so I feel like the shit that's in his movies, and I'm not just going to shit on him specifically, because I will say that this is a trope that turns up in a lot of like romantic comedies, which always makes me wildly uncomfortable. Because this is something that is like encouraging dudes to be stalkers. I'm like, nobody likes that shit. Yeah. Don't like come up to me on the street and like tell me I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to be like your soulmate or whatever. Like, leave me the fuck alone, man. Yeah. Like, don't make me punch you in the fucking teeth because I will. Yeah. And then you get mad about it. Badger's saying the tangents are great. Um, just saying. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. Alex, he just showed up. I think, what? No, what is it? Alex? <laughs> I'm drunk. I can't read all these lines. Yeah, Oracle says it's modeling stupid behavior. It is. Like, yeah. don't encourage that. I feel like that is something... This is why I don't like rom-coms. This is why I don't like that kind of shit. Because it just encourages, like, shitty behavior. It encourages, like, this yeah. kind of pursuit of, like, look, I don't... Because I've had that shit happen to me. Like, I'm just, like, fucking where I used to work. I used to work at this print shop, and I used to, like, take a walk during my lunch hour so I wouldn't get fat or whatever. So I'm taking a walk. How many fucking times, like, every other day, some dude would, like, pull his car over to the curb. Hey, I'll give you a ride. Hey, hey I'm walking. Like, leave me the fuck alone. And then they get hostile. So you have to, like, manage their egos, like, all the time. It's like, I don't want to get killed. I don't want to this and that and the other. I'm just trying to, like, walk and just do normal shit. But you can't do that because they're, like, constantly up in your fucking face. Soap's in there singing the fucking Morrissey song. The more you ignore me, the, the closer, closer I get. get. You're, You're wasting, wasting your time. time. Yeah, yeah, that's a... I swear I bear more grudges than lonely high court judges. <laughs> that was a good song. <laughs> yeah. You guys don't know that it's called The More You Ignore Me, The Closer I Get. That motherfucker's a stalker right there. That's what I mean. That's yeah. so, like that. That's unacceptable behavior. <laughs> yeah. That's unacceptable go, behavior. That's what I'm but yeah, so I, Is I it do... Is almost uh, time for you to take a break, for a halfway break? Well, I'll wait till you come back from the right. bathroom and then I'll go to right. the bathroom because I have a pookie video that I shot last week. I put music in the shit and everything and then like I forgot to do it because I was like drunk, I supposedly. So, whatever. But yeah, I don't know. I, I don't like, I don't like any movie that encourages stalking behavior. And I feel like a lot of James Nyan's movies, and I'm sure he's not intending it. I, he seems like a lovely man. But eh, I don't really, I don't like it. I don't like the fact that I could be walking down the street and some like some weird solar panels dude could be like, that's the woman for me. You're supposed to be my wife or you're my fucking soulmate or whatever. And then he's going to follow me back to my apartment. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that. Like I said, you'll, you'll probably get stabbed right in the face because I, I, I'm not doing it. So, all right. So let's talk about, let's go back to talking about the Wonderland murders because holy shit, I shouldn't have done this. I'm so fucking sleepy. All right. So we're talking about the Wonderland murders. Now we're talking about shit that led up to that, which is the home invasion and robbery of Eddie Nash. Now, Eddie Nash, as I said, was a very powerful figure in LA 
in this time period. He owned many nightclubs in the area. He was uh, also a known drug dealer. He was very wealthy. Um, he was suspected of a lot of things, but because he was wealthy, he got away with shit. Like, you know, happens. Now, John Holmes, a.k.a. Johnny Wad, because I, I never get sick of saying that, he was a, a friend of Eddie Nash. In fact, so much so that Eddie Nash referred to him as his brother. He was over there all the time trying to, like, buy drugs or get drugs for free, which he did for a time until Eddie Nash was like, yeah, I'm not doing that anymore. But so Johnny Nash was over there, or, you know, Johnny Wad was over there all the time. So Eddie Nash had this big house. There was like all these parties going on all the time. There was all these women over there. Always something going on at the house. So allegedly, John Holmes comes back to the Wonderland gang house. And as I said, John Holmes at this stage was a really bad cocaine addict. And he was getting kind of desperate, I suppose, that he was running out of money. He was running out of drugs. So he basically told the people at the uh, Wonderland house, hey, Eddie Nash has a safe under his bed and it has all this cash. It has all this. He has all these drugs. He has all this jewelry. You guys could just like break into the house and steal all the stuff because the Wonderland gang had done similar things before. They were well known for doing that type of shit. So John Holmes allegedly uh, came to them and said that that was uh, something that they should do. Um, so at this state, can I go to the bathroom? Yeah, go ahead. All right. So play commercials. Well, I'm going to play commercials. Play the damn commercials. Okay. Well, can you do it for me? Yeah. Which Effie, one is it? Effie commercial and then Pookie today. Okay. That's so it. I'm going to do that. All right. That's what you got to do. Go ahead. All right. You ready? Go ahead. Do the commercial. I'm going to do a commercial. Do it. All right. I'll be back in a second. You love true crime. I love true crime. And I've spent the last three years compiling a series of the most intriguing unsolved murders of the 20th century. It's called The Faceless Villain, and Volume 3 is available now. Featuring such fascinating cases as the Ketty Murders, the Carrie Babies Case, the Frog Boys, the Alcacer Murders, and the Anokashira Park Dismemberment Incident, The Faceless Villain Volume 3 is an involving exploration of unsolved slang spanning the years from 1980 to 1999. Pick up your copy in print or ebook formats on Amazon, or download the audiobook version from audible.com, and get ready for a chilling journey through modern crime history. Okay, I'm back, and I'm at the con. And you like the fucking Pookie commercial? <laughs> I'm I am the ghost of troubled Joe, hung by his pretty white neck. Some 18 months ago, I traveled to a mystical time zone, but I missed my bed, so I soon came home. I said there's too much caffeine in your bloodstream. And a lack of real spice of your life. I said, leave me alone because I'm I'm all right, right, Dad. Dad. So prized to still be on my own. Okay, go ahead. Wow. Yeah, sing it. You did pretty good, actually. You like that one? I'll fucking sing some more. See every commercial. (laughs) 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 I can't believe you sat in my chair. Like. Yeah, I was at the con, man. I'm on the commercial. So yeah, where was I? Mm-hmm. I'm talking about Eddie Nash. Mm-hmm. So Eddie Nash, <clears throat> I love this. That 
he was one of those dudes. Eddie Nash was obviously not his real name. He was actually Palestinian. He came to the U.S. with $7 in his pocket. And in L.A., he opened up a hot dog cart. And a couple years later, was one of the main, like, nightclub owners in L.A. And one of the biggest drug dealers. So, American dream, motherfucker. But yeah, so he took the name Eddie Nash because... When he was in, uh, when he first came to LA, he was in like, he was an extra in a couple of movies. And I guess he was in a Western or something like that. And like his name was Nash. So he just decided he was going to like be called that. So he called himself the Nash, which I thought was very funny. So this dude had this big, huge house. He had all this fucking shit in there. And that was like where you went to party. You went, you, you know, you, he had all the drugs. He had all the chicks were there and shit like that. So Holmes had been going there. And the two of them were kind of like thick as thieves or whatever. They were like friends. So, as I said, Holmes was getting desperate at this point, And he told the Wonderland gang, hey, you guys can like break into Eddie Nash's house. And he has all this stuff that you can take. So they told him. Now, this is one version of the story. I'll get into like the there's another version later. But. One version of the story was that he came to them and he's like, basically, this is my idea. Um, You guys can, you know, do a home invasion on Eddie Nash. You can take all this stuff and give me a cut of it. So they said, okay, well, all you have to do, just go to Eddie Nash's house, act totally normal and leave his sliding door, like into the kitchen of the house or whatever, like unlocked. So we can come in there and, you know, pretty much shake the, shake the place down. So that's essentially what happened. So what ends up happening is that John John Holmes goes to Eddie Nash's house. Now, the day before the crime, this is kind of hilarious to me, like in a black lake comic sort of way. So they had planned to do this big fucking robbery, right? Of this dude's house, who is one of the biggest gangsters in L.A., Like, they feel like they're going to pull this off without retribution, which, okay. So, John Holmes goes to the dude's house at first to buy drugs, and he's, like, acting normal. He leaves, and then he leaves the door unlocked. Now, later in the day, he thinks to himself, well, shit, maybe somebody noticed that the door was unlocked, so maybe I should go back and make sure that the door is unlocked. So he goes back and does that. It's like, oh, I need some more drugs or something like that. So he came up with some other excuse. And then like, he goes back like, and make sure, okay, the door is still unlocked. It's fine. And then he goes back to the Wonderland gang house and it's like fucking seven or eight in the morning at this stage. And he's like, okay, you guys, it's like, it's, it's all fine. Everything's set up. The door is unlocked. You guys can go in. And everybody in the house was so fucked up on heroin that they were just like, nah, man, <laughs> And it's like, they couldn't even be fucking bothered to like fucking, they're, they were also fucked up on heroin that they couldn't even like be bothered to like, are we going to do that robbery today? Yeah. Yeah, I'll yeah. Do, yeah. I'll get to it. Whatever. It was just like that kind of shit, which they're I don't knocked know. out. To me, that was like super, super yeah. funny, like in a fucked up sort of way because he, they'd made this big plan and then he was just kind of like, okay, let's do it. And it's like, nah, man, like leader. I'm just. It's like those, I don't know, it's very funny to me. So, so they go to the house. So basically, what happens is that John Holmes had left the door unlocked, right? The sliding glass door. So it's eight in the morning. This gang, consisting of, allegedly, Ron Lanius, um, Billy Deverell, and David Lind. Maybe John Holmes? We're not real sure if he was there or not. I kind of suspect maybe he was, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So uh, Tracy McCourt was actually the getaway driver. He did not go inside. um, So he was outside in the getaway car. They basically, they go in the house. They first say that they're cops and this is like a drug bust. They come in the door and they're just basically like, like you're busted because of drugs or whatever. And then they tie up uh, Eddie Nash. They also tie up his... um, bodyguard whose name was Gregory Diles. Now, during this kind of shit, Gregory Diles gets shot allegedly accidentally. He lived, um, but 
Everybody said, oh, the, well, the gun went off accidentally, like in all the chaos or whatever. He got shot in the back, but he lived. It was fine. And, um, but another thing that happened too was that apparently they humiliated Eddie Nash. Like they tied him up. They made him like get down on his knees and like beg for his life. Um, they had to like, they needed the, um, you know, the, uh, the fucking shit for the safe that was under the bed, the combination rather. So they basically like humiliated him. Like they tied him up and made him give him the, um, the accommodation for the safe. Now they ended up getting away this gang. They ended up getting away with $1.2 million dollars. In 1981 money. Damn, that's a lot of money. Which to me, nowadays, that's almost three and a half million dollars. It was in cocaine. There was some pure heroin in there. There was some jewelry. There was some antique pistols that had actually belonged to the Wonderland gang, but they had like sold or they had given to Eddie Nash earlier, like in exchange for drugs, but he hadn't given them drugs or whatever. So it was like this big thing. And I think that was one of the things that like spurred them to go like hold up the place. Cause they're like, Hey, he has these guns that were, that belong to us. Any idea? Even though they had stolen them from someone else. Any idea what, and what kind of, I don't remember they what they were, but they were yeah. like really, um, they talked about it in the movie somewhat, but what had apparently happened was that they had these antique pistols. Cause I guess, um, Ron Lanius like collected them and he was going to try and fence them or sell them or something like that. And then like he gave them, as far as I remember, he gave them to Eddie Nash as like collateral for drugs. And then I guess Eddie had said, either I can't fence these because they're too fancy or they're too distinctive or whatever. Right. And, um, so I was saying true. So true I can't give them right. True collectibles. You just can't get rid of them that way. That's yeah. And that's, I think right. essentially that's what happened. Right. Um, so I think that was another thing other than John Holmes saying, Hey, he's got all this shit in his house. I think that was another thing that spurred the Wonderland gang to want to, Hold up, Eddie Nash was like, hey, he's got these antique pistols that, if like I said, they belong to Ron Lanius, but they didn't really because he had stolen them from someone else. So right. they were really his. They were in his custody. But they were in his custody. So right. And he wanted them back. So that was like another, you know, thing that like made them want to hold up this dude. So they go in there, they do the shit. Like I said, they, like the, um... Gregory Diles, the bodyguard, he got shot, but he didn't die. So no one got killed in the holdup. Um, but apparently Eddie Nash was super pissed off about the humiliation that he had endured. He didn't really care about the stuff that got stolen because like I said, he was like super rich. He owned all these nightclubs and stuff, but he was apparently very upset that they had made him get on his knees and made him like beg for his life and stuff like that. And that was something he would not forgive. Hmm. So allegedly he decided that he was going to get some people together and get fucking revenge for the shit. And allegedly this was what spurred the Wonderland murders. Now what ended up happening was that a couple of days after this, fucking robbery was that at 8763 Wonderland Avenue, Los Angeles. It's about three o'clock in the morning. Ron Lanius was in the house as was Billy Deverell and his girlfriend, Joy Miller, who, as I said, was the leaseholder on the house and Barbara Richardson, who was the girlfriend. I think she was the girlfriend of Ron Lanius. I think they were like estranged but she had kind of come back to reconcile or something like that. She was like sleeping on the couch or whatever. Now it's about three o'clock in the morning. Armed men come to the door. Allegedly, John Holmes actually came to the door and said, hey, let me in. It's me, John. And they didn't have any reason to doubt it. So they opened the door for him. Allegedly. This is one version of the story. So whenever, however the door got opened, a bunch of armed dudes break into the house and start beating all the sleeping occupants of the house to death with uh, lead pipes and uh, various other implements. If you have seen the crime scene photos of this shit, 
which I have. I would not recommend it. I'm not putting them in the video, but who they are nasty. <laughs> Were the heads above the blankets? You could see you could see the heads that were smashed. Yep. Damn. How bad was it? And there was blood everywhere. So they must have been fucking high on something. The few. blood was just it was all over the walls. The other ones didn't wake up while he's beating one, the other ones aren't. Well, a up. lot of them were like fucking they were all on drugs, you know. Yes, I mean? they were high. So yeah. sleeping. Yeah, it was bad. And even like the dude, like the cops that like investigated were like, this was like worse than the Tate LaBianca murders. Worse. Yeah. They're like, there was just fucking blood everywhere. And like I said, I've seen the crime scene photos and I would not recommend looking at them. They're super, super gross. Because these people were all brutally bludgeoned to death. They find Ron Lanius. Uh, who, as I said, was the leader of the group. They also found, like, his wife, Susan, who, like I said, was not really in the gang. They were actually kind of estranged, but she she had lived somewhere else, but she kind of came uh, down to stay with him, like, to reconcile or to do something. She was actually not even sleeping with him. She was on sleeping on the couch. Um, Billy Deverell uh, and his girlfriend, Joy Miller, who was the leaseholder, um, they were also beaten to death. So they come in... They find Billy and Joy in one of the bedrooms. They had both been beaten to death. Now, Billy's body, and I've seen, like I said, this crime scene photo, he was, like, propped up against a TV stand. Like, I don't know how this happened, but he was just, like, laying against this TV stand, and, like, his head is all fucking busted up, and there's blood all over the fucking wall. It's, like, it's really fucked up looking. Now, Ron and Susan were in this other bedroom, and then... Um, Ron was dead when they found him, but Susan was actually still alive, which I will get into in a little bit. The shitty thing is that, so apparently, cause this is like a townhouse. There's other houses like right there and the house is still there. Like if you look like other houses are like really close by. So apparently neighbors, when police asked them later on, like if they heard anything, Neighbors were like, yeah, like, we heard some screaming and we heard people saying, like, don't kill me and shit. But they were so used to, like, a bunch of drug addicts and, like, parties and shit going on at this house that no one thought there was anything weird about it. So the shit didn't even get reported until, like, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, like, the next day. Yeah. Like, when, and that was only because, like, somebody that was, like, he was, like, a mover, and he was working in, like, the townhouse next door, and he heard somebody moaning, which turned out to be Susan, who wasn't dead, and he heard, like, a woman moaning, and he thought it was weird, so he called the police. That was, like, almost 24 hours later. But nobody, yeah. like, people heard screaming, but nobody thought it was weird, because they're like, hey, it was a bunch of drug addicts, and people were in and out, like, no one thought anything weird about it. Michael, Michael Schaefer's in there saying... More people that own guns and more wrong places crooks will break into. Well, I don't know what country, I don't, I don't know what really country you're living in. Here in the United States, fucking guns are not even really the problem. The problem's more the organizations. Fucking everybody has guns, and crooks can get any gun anywhere. Look, <clears throat> my uncle is a fucking hell's angels. There's shit going on in those motorcycle gangs that you could never fucking imagine, and it has nothing to do with guns. There are motorcycle gangs that own slaves, female slaves, and it's for real. Um, and you can say, well, the cops will be on that, and then you find out that some of those dudes in those fucking outlaw biker gangs are cops. The corruption and the evil runs very, very fucking deep. The kind of people you're talking about in some of these organizations. It's almost like fucking special forces or CIA level fucking shit. A dude that I went was in the army with, his name is fucking Timothy Timothy Van Vacius. You can look it up. Look him up on the internet. He's a, me and him came up together in the army. He's probably one of the best of fucking best assassins that have ever fucking lived. Who owned well had a business in Central and South America, a band of international mercenaries from Germany and Poland, and all they did was run around and train drug cartels in Central and South America. His side job was to assassinate people. You can look at his fucking criminal record. I can show you pictures of me and him together. This is unstoppable shit. You can say, well, he's working for the bad guys. 
the bad guys he were working with were intelligence agency agencies agencies and political figures in South American and Central American governments. All right, that's how that shit actually works. It doesn't. There is no clear line between good and bad. It's all about money and power, especially down there in those banana republics. Nothing's clear cut. Fucking Khan of Atslan, fucking, he's sometimes in the discussions, in the comments. He's not with us tonight. He lives down in Tijuana. And he sent me a lot of fucking videos over, over the years. The shit that's going on down there with these Mexican cartels. All right. These Mex these cartels and these criminal organizations work for a lot of these politicians. All right, it's just the way it is. Uh, you, none of this is going to stop forever. It's been around for thousands of years, going back to Sicarios and stuff in the Roman era, in the Roman Empire. All this shit's dirty. Okay, that's all. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. I gotta get off my fucking soapbox. You sure? Yeah, but get off my soapbox. There is there. Uh, we live in a bad world. And you're protected from it mostly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just, just yeah. making sure. Just yeah, yeah. I'm off. I'm off. So giving you a few seconds. Yeah. Just in case. Yeah, I, I, I'm coming back down. <clears throat> okay. I thought you were yeah. gonna say something else. The only ahead. person watching your back is you. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> See, I know. I know you too well. Yeah, I mean, you know me too I know, too well. when, you know, I know too when you're like yeah, gearing up yeah, to say yeah, something yeah. else. I'm just like. Yeah. The only person watching your back is you. Take care of yourself and your family. Go ahead. So, yeah, at this day, so basically, these people came in. They beat these people to death with what they later determined or they suspected were iron pipes and hammers. So this was like not, this wasn't like an execution in the sense of we're just like trying to, um, you know, just like wipe these people out. This was clearly something to send a message because they went the most gruesome route they could possibly go. This entire house was basically painted with blood. And I don't feel like the killers made any particular effort to disguise that they were there there were like bloody footprints everywhere they didn't like fucking you know they were just kind of like they wanted to send a message is what i'm saying and they really did do it in the most gruesome fucking way that they could do they basically just went around and hammered and iron piped everyone to death while they were sleeping so as i said four of the um people in the house were killed outright susan was still alive now she um, actually did survive her injuries, even though she was beaten severely also. Um, she actually ended up having like really bad brain damage and she lost part of her skull. Um, and when police tried to question her about the shit, her, uh, you know, understandably, her memory was not, she couldn't remember anything. All she could remember was a bunch of shadowy dudes coming in and like hitting her in the face. That's all she remembered. So she couldn't remember like who it was or anything like that. But they're pretty much, I mean, they pretty much knew who it was. Cause here's the thing. So a couple of days after the murder happened, um, the LAPD were kind of suspected that because of the uh, burglary at Eddie Nash's house, they suspected that this might have been a retaliatory effort, so they went to Eddie Nash's house a couple of days after the murder. And they found about a million dollars worth of coke, and they found a bunch of stuff that had been in the Wonderland house and was now in the Eddie Nash house, which, hmm, that seems a little interesting. Go to the restroom, hold on. Now, there are two... Um, are you going to that? Yeah, but I lost my I lost my connection here. Hold on. Okay. I'll fix it first. So there are two like strains of thought, and like I said, I like the Wonderland movie because it kind of addressed both of these stories. Both of the stories. Okay, so one story says that John Holmes was kind of not necessarily the mastermind, but he was the one that kind of like 
gave the gang the incentive. He's like, hey, look, you guys need money. You guys need drugs. Eddie Nash, who is a friend of mine, um, he has all of this. He, he has all his money. He has all these drugs. It's in this safe under his bed. And he kind of like gave them this information. Now, there's a story that fucking uh, David Lind, the Aryan Brotherhood dude, who was kind of like the second in command or whatever, he was kind of like in the gang. Like, he didn't even know whose house they were hitting at the time. He was just kind of like, oh, John Holmes said it was okay. And it's like, he had all this money. And it's like, we just went there. And then I found out that it was Eddie Nash later on. Because evidently, Eddie Nash was very well known to, like, the authorities at that time. And also very well known in the, um, you know, criminal underworld or whatever. Um, I'm not sure I buy that. But they did kind of like go into that in the movie a little bit. Like they, like I said, in the early part of the movie, they made David Lind like a more sympathetic character until later on when John Holmes starts talking and it's kind of like a different thing. But he said that they didn't know that it was Eddie Nash's house. Um, basically, they just said, oh, it was like, what did they even call him? The Arab or the something like that? Because Eddie Nash, like I said, he was Palestinian born, but he went by the name Eddie Nash because that was just the, the name he adopted. That was not his birth name. So that's kind of like the only thing they knew him by. So it's like, we didn't know is we just thought it was this dude that had a lot of money and drugs. And we were just like hitting this house like we had hit many other ones. But like I said, I don't know if I buy that. But... So he, yeah, so he thought that that was what was going on. Now, there's another line of thought where no one knows whether John Holmes, as I said, aka Johnny Wad from the porno films, no one knows if he was actually there or not. Because even though it seems allegedly that he did suggest this to the Wonderland gang that they should hold up Eddie Nash's house and told them where the uh, the safe was and all that other kind of stuff, which they probably wouldn't have known without him, you know, telling them. But there is some controversy over whether John Holmes was present at the scene, whether he just let them in, whether he was forced to participate because Eddie Nash basically like took him hostage and said, I'm going to kill everyone in your fucking family unless you do what I tell you to do, unless you let me into this house. Um, the thing about it is that after he died, after John Holmes died in 1988 of AIDS, um, his wife, Sharon, who was estranged at this time, um, for obvious reasons. Um, she basically didn't say anything about him one way or the other until after he was dead. And then she came out and said, look, the morning after the murders or like the day of the murders that John Holmes had come to her house and that he was covered in blood and that he was freaking out about how he had seen a murder. So, most people are speculating that he was probably there. Whether he did any of the murders or not, I'm not really sure. But most people think that he was probably at least there and was at least forced to participate or at least said, if you don't participate, we're going to kill you or we're going to kill your wife. You're gonna, we're going to kill your girlfriend or whatever. In the movie Wonderland, they portray it as... Um, Eddie Nash, who is actually played by Eric Bogosian in the movie, um, that he has John Holmes's black book, quote unquote, that has his wife's name and address in it, has his girlfriend's name and address in it. And basically Eddie Nash says to him, look, I'm going to kill everybody in this book unless you do what I tell you. Like, let me into that house. I'm going to kill everybody in the, you have to participate. So I have some shit on you. And then... You know what I mean? So you don't have, a, like, a choice. So I don't know how true that is. But according to his wife, Sharon, he did come to her the day that the murder happened. And he was all covered in blood that wasn't his. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So just saying. So he might have been there at the point. At the time. Now, 
Uh, John Holmes did actually get arrested in connection with the murder a few days after the crime because they found his left palm print on the headboard of Ron Lonnie's bed in the house. So Holmes gets arrested. He's charged with four counts of murder. This was in uh, spring of 1982. Now, basically, the prosecution was trying to sell the story that John Holmes had set up the robbery at Eddie Nash's place, but then he got pissed off because he didn't get the cut of the, uh, you know, the loot that he thought he was going to get because he wanted the drugs, man. And apparently they wouldn't give him the amount of drugs that he wanted or the amount of money that he wanted. So he got mad and like, whatever. So that was the prosecution story that he was, you know, just pissed off because so he was like taking revenge and he was kind of like, not necessarily the mastermind, but he was like involved in it. Now, Holmes's defense as I mentioned earlier, we're trying to sell the narrative that Holmes had been roped into the shit against his will that like Nash was basically like, look, I knew you, I know you set up the robbery and I'm going to kill your whole entire family. If you don't participate in the shit, like leave the door open, like do this or whatever. So it's kind of like that whole situation. So the trial of John Holmes lasted three weeks. And in June, uh, June 26, 1982, John Holmes ends up getting acquitted of all charges. Although he did spend 110 days in jail for contempt of court because he was refusing to cooperate with authorities. Because one thing that he would do was that he would say that he had all this information and then like he would get like nice hotel rooms. He would get all this other kind of shit. And then like the cops would come and be like, okay, what you got? And then like, he would like obfuscate and like not. So he was trying to like get over basically <laughs> is what he was trying to do. I don't know about you, but I'm getting starving. I'm getting hungry. Are you really? I'm getting fucking hungry. <laughs> we got so much food in that refrigerator. I'm thinking about cooking up. I can, I can make pizza. What do you think? With the hand tossed crust and everything. That's a lot of work though. I got all that yeah, you're too thin drunk. sliced. You're too drunk to do I'm that too right drunk now. for that shit. I got that fucking thin sliced pork tenderloin, Mexican style. Yeah. Could do the fucking tacos or I could do a burrito with, with pork and cheese and pico de gallo in it. I could do, uh, let's see what else I could do. I got some hamburger thawed. I got all that tomato sauce. I could make fucking spaghetti. Oh God, so much. Ham- with hamburger in it. So much heartburn. I know. Man. This is <laughs> okay. I'm just I'm making the audience hungry. I need to stop it. Tacos would be good though. I need to stop. Tacos would be good with the pork. Probably. Why not with with the uh, um, corn tortilla or flour? I got two kinds of corn tortilla. I got. Ri- Was I got, that your stomach? No, it went like this. Oh. I got pre-made corn tortillas. I can take maseca and make handmade corn tortillas. That takes longer. I'm fucking drunk. Or I could whatever do it to, ta- whatever is like takes the least let's amount do the of corn. time. Let's do the corn and is let's do least the likely for you to burn the house down. Let's, let's do the let's do the pre made corn ones when we're done. I'll cook them up in a pan. Okay, like I said, sound good, doesn't it? I don't want you to burn the house. Down. No, I'm gonna burn. The well, house. I have to go afterward and like turn off because even like when you were sober earlier on, you I made was... some burgers for lunch and like I went through the kitchen to like do the laundry or whatever and I'm like you left. Fucking stove on. Yeah, that's stove on. But it's all right. If G can leave his fucking stove on. I was fucking juggling all kinds of... I was juggling all kinds of tasks at once. I was fucking doing the dishwasher. She got me in here working like I'm fucking working at... Like I'm in a restaurant working. Yeah, but the thing about it is that... The food is good. I know, but... How's how's the cookbook going? But I... It's it's honestly really... It's going really well, It's going good, actually. okay. Cookbook's going to be out soon, people. I'm She's trying to, like I said, I'm trying to get it out before Christmas. Right. She's got the foundation and the skeleton and all the photos of the fucking cookbook. It's all together. laid out. It's in, after it's that, I'll go out. back in there and change some shit. You and gotta like go in there and, and personalize the it because. And I need some like pictures of you. I need okay. some pictures of Pookie. Right. I need some pictures of Beijing to like put in good. there at various points. It's gonna be good. And then after that, I'll be done. It's gonna be good. I mean, put a picture of Pookie in there. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, okay. Well, right. I, I want Pookie's like input. Input. 
Yeah. I want Beijing's input also, even though she's... Beijing's gonna be scowling. Yeah, she's that always... cat's that, that Beijing she's is so constantly bitchy. on fuck you status. Fuck you. Fuck you. She's like the, Beijing, she's like you. the Paris Hilton of cats. Yeah, fuck you. She's such a funny. I don't cat. know why, but I gotta get that shit on video. I keep trying, but it's like yeah. she doesn't. I don't know. Yeah. All right. And like I said, every night she gets up and she's like with her babies. And Michael like, says, do you use lard when making tortillas? You're talking about the Maseca tortillas? Nah, I actually just cook them in vegetable oil. But very, very little. The first time you take the ball and you press it, press the Maseca ball out, I'll take it and I'll put it in a, almost a dry non-stick pan to kind of get them to fucking cure like that. And then I store them like that. And then when it comes time to, to serve them, I'll take those tortillas back out that I made and I'll slight amount of vegetable oil to kind of put a crisp on them. That's how I do it. But you can do it any way you want, man. You can cook that shit in bacon grease. I keep my bacon grease. I'm fucking Southern. We talking about, of course I'm going to keep bacon grease. We have grease. a whole jar of I'm going to keep fucking bacon grease, times. man. Fucking right. Tila, she's already, that girl's in California, all right? You keep your bacon grease, don't you? Yeah, hell yeah. You well, do. I mean, even when I was growing up, yeah. you kept bacon grease because what the fuck else are you going to fry your breakfast eggs in? Yeah. So the southern food, southern food. It's so bad for you, but it's so, so good. <laughs> <laughs> Tila says our desserts in the cookbook. Yes, they are. Yes. Yes, they are. Yes. We're doing a whole cocktails and desserts section. Southern food. I, I, I'm, I, I'm Southern. Okay. Me too. And I've been, and so she, it's, it's soul food, basically. You know what I mean? It's, it's black That's food. That's the largest basi- section in the basically, book. Basically. Okay. <laughs> and Southern food, you know, there might be more blackish variations, more whitish variations, but it's that same food, you know, and, and it's all fucking good. It's far superior to what else is in the United States. And I, I say that by decree. It's a superior food. So you're not allowed to like say anything. Of course, other you than can't that, contradict me. Well, the, no, it's against the law it's against to the contradict law. Tom. Well, no, there's another shirt. It's against the I'm law. I'm not lying. I'm just bragging. There's a difference, okay? Fucking when you okay. when you're bragging, you're you're allowed <laughs> to fucking say shit like that. But I'm a man, and I have my weaknesses, and of course, I like foreign food, like Italian food. That's foreign food. All right. I love Mexican food. I love Thai food, Japanese food. I, I like honestly Indian food is probably if I had to f- pick my favorite cuisine. Yeah, yeah. Indian food. And actually, Holy shit, I would dude. say one one third of everything I make is Indian. More maybe one we third. make a lot. Of I Indian make a food. lot of Indian. I fucking I like love. Thai food too, but man, Indian food is so so. Good. I'm gonna say something. Everything's that, good. I'm gonna say something, and this is gonna shatter the fucking world. You people are gonna get upset over what I say. Indian food and Mexican foods are the ultimate poor people food. And I say this because... And that's not the like a denigrate. No. no, hell no. The components are low-cost components, but you eat like a fucking king. Yep. With Mexican food and, it, and, and Indian food. Yeah, you food. get the best of both worlds. Yeah. It's like it's it delicious food, but it's it not doesn't cost that much. expensive. And southern food's kind of like that, but it's a little limited on the spice. You know, you're talking about hominy grits and grits. You're talking about things that you can do with bacon grease. You're talking about chicken fried steak. You're talking about, well, you know, the English style breakfasts that we all eat. But then there's also muffins and biscuits. And, I'll eat all of it. I'll eat all of it. And then there's the Cajun versions, which are actually kind of, you know, you're, 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 which aren't as Cajun as people think they are. It's really. Perdo- Paul, Paul Perdome Perdome, yeah, sure. is really has, has a lot to do with that, and it's really not that old, you know. Which is etouffee and fucking, you know, fucking, you know, you know the deal. Fucking. Um, Zach says, "Sorry." Yeah. Zach says, "I have never had Indian food." What? Zach, you're gay. You're gay. Zach. Well, he knows that. But Don't it's gay. Like, how can you even call yourself a gay man never having Indian seriously food? Indian food? That's, Every gay man should be, should should have been born with fucking some fucking butter chicken in their up fucking mouth. Up until I ate Indian food, I can't understand food, that shit. I was all kind of like, oh, you know, Italian food, it's good. It's like I liked British food, I like it. But once I started getting into Indian food, yeah. oh my god, <laughs> yeah, everything is good. And everything. Here, re, Indian food also it's it has it's a very well developed high cuisine 
made out of very low cost components. Mm-hmm. It's basically the same preparation method, just variations of the same preparation methods. Yeah, over yeah, yeah. Over. Like once you know how to once make one she, Indian dish, yeah, you can make you can other ones because right. it's kind of like a variation of that. Jenny and I went to a place, this, this fucking local restaurant we have here. It's called the Fifth Element. The shit was great before the pandemic hit. It was great. Well, they still it. do takeout. And I saw, we saw basically like a lawn crew, a white dude with three other fucking black dudes. And these were fucking working class dudes working out of the back of a truck cutting people's lawns. And he was, the white dude was showing the black dude. He was introducing them. Them to, to the fucking Indian They food. were at the next booth over. And, and he was like, this is like chili. And, he, and, and his redneck ass was trying to explain it to the brothers. And they were getting off on that shit. They ate that damn buffet down to nothing. They were fucking tearing it up. And there's something about Indian cuisine that has kind of like a high cuisine element to it, but it's something that a working man can understand because it's hearty. It is very yeah. hearty, and it's like chili. Variations yeah. on chili over and over again. It's fucking great, man. And great. it doesn't have to be, like, I, I feel like a lot of people, particularly, like, um, Americans, might have a misperception that all Indian food is, like, super spicy, which no. it's not. Um, you can have, because I don't like super spicy food either. Well, I like it. My stomach doesn't like it because I'm old. But it doesn't have to be like that. There's another thing is there's a perception that Indian food might be made out of something weird. It's not. It's not. It's made out of the same normal stuff you've been Chicken, seeing. Chicken, lamb. And then turmeric. Yeah. Chili. Plain yogurt. Cinnamon. Butter. Cinnamon. Cloves. Cumin. Garlic. Uh, ground onions that have been fried as a, as a base. It's nothing weird. Cream. It's nothing weird. There's nothing really weird in it. It's just a... Other than goat. But even that is good. Even that's not that weird. That's like lamb. It tastes yeah. like lamb to me. And that's only if you want it. Most of it's chicken because that's cheaper. Yeah. So it's nothing. It has an exotic flavor profile. But it's only exotic because you haven't seen it yet. What it's made out of is very common. Yeah, it's stuff. just it's the same shit that most yeah. like Americans would use in their yeah. shit. Just different proportions and different yeah. combinations of it's like and like i said it doesn't have to be super hot because i can't eat super hot shit because my yeah. digestive system just rebels right but you can get mild versions of all the shit like yeah. seriously we go to like the indian we're well gonna, we're gonna put some indian recipes in the yeah there's book. a bunch of those in yeah. there and i mean memories of india yeah there's two of those there's right. one in lake mary and there's one in downtown orlando which probably like the best Indian restaurant in yeah. this area, I think. If you guys have never had it, it's the basis of it is basically chili and rice. That's basically what it right. is. Except that the rice is basmati, which is an almond flavored rice. Okay, the chili instead of being based, being very hearty and tomatoey, which some of them are, might have a more of a cream base. And instead of chili powder, it might have more turmeric or it might have more cumin. It depends on what direction it's going to go. But it's basically the same spices you'd find in, chi- in chili, in American yeah. chili. It's not all that different. It's just there might be different ratios. So right. instead of it being red, it might be yellow. You know, that, that'd be the big. And then it might have cream in it on top of all of that. So it'd be nice, be nice and creamy. And instead of beef, because cream Indians, or yogurt. It, yeah, and Indians don't eat beef, it's against their religion. But they eat chicken and lamb. So. Imagine like a chili made out of chicken, but it's creamy, and it might be yellow. That's all it is. Garlic That's what and ginger. It's not weird. No, not weird. It's not weird. Beautiful. And honestly, like, one of my favorite things from India, well, other than butter chicken, which I think is probably my favorite dish of all time yeah. ever, I love paneer. Yeah. Which is, it's just regular flat bread with a yogurt base instead of fucking... It's a cheese. It's cheese. Yeah. But yeah. it's like, it's a... Oh, mo- paneer, paneer. I was thought you were yeah. talking, talking about... I thought, you, I thought you said naan. No. Well, no, I love naan too. Yeah, yeah. Paneer. Paneer. It's just cheese. Cottage cheese. It's cheese, but yeah. it's it's like cottage cheese, but, but it's not... But it's a block of it. It's a block. It's a block. It's not... It's, not it's a, a very mild cheese. Yeah. Easy to make. 
honestly, like sog paneer, which is like spinach with just it's like I said, it's nothing weird. It's just like, it's right. spinach and cheese. Imagine a block of tofu, but chewier. Right, but That's it's not tofu. It's no, cheese. No, it's not tofu. It's cheese. It's cheese, but yeah. it's a very very mild cheese. Almost kind of like a mozzarella, but it's almost kind of like a mozzarella, but it doesn't melt. It stays together. Yeah, right, right, right. So it's like it's, it's like mozzarella. It tastes like mozzarella, but it's like tofu. It's like yeah. It's like a tofu that's a little chewier. Right, right. So matter. it's kind of like that. Yeah. And one of my, that is one of my favorite things. Yeah, I make it all the time for you. You do. Yeah. But now we're talking about food again. We're going off on the food on the food thing. <laughs> Although see, people seem to be enjoying it. Well, like I said, I'm I'm, I'm always at the end of the fucking crime yeah. shit. So you know, I told you that I told you before the show started. Yeah. I was like, look, I'm super, super sleepy. Yeah. Tila said she, she, she knows about it. She's, she's telling people to try the spicy lentil stew. Yo, hell yeah. Uh, I used to make the, I, I made the lentil stew. Remember, remember that? Yeah, yeah, Lentil yeah. curry. Yeah. He's made a curry right. with lentils. Yeah. You made like, yeah, all that. You, yeah. What, you made one with like black eyed peas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you see, some of the Western stuff is making its way into India. They all use it. Yeah. You know? When I go online to go find recipes, I'm only listening to them Indian girls cooking it. Indian women. I'm going to use their recipes. They know what they're doing. You know what I mean? I'm not going to listen to... Although, Gordon Ramsay went... He, he wrote a very good cookbook on the Indian stuff. Yeah, I bought you that shit. Yeah, you bought it for him. The thing is about <laughs> Gordon is that Gordon put the spice level real very mild. Very low. Real mild. Very and low. I'm not into that. I like the Which... spice level up there. I'm like, like I said, if it's too spicy, my yeah. stomach will rebel. But I want a little bit of spice. Like, more than Gordon Ramsay says. About three times. Put more. Right. Okay, yeah. Gordon Ramsay. He's a pussy. I have his Indian book, cookbook. Yeah. I gave that to you. Yeah, he's a pussy when it comes to spices, though. Yeah, well, even I said, and I'm a, like a wuss when it comes to spice. I'm yeah. like, yeah, like, up that like three times, and then it'll be okay. Yeah. Now, Mexican, on the other hand, it's all... It tends to be pork based. Um, taco really is like their one of their main things. That's like the hamburger of Mexico, and there's about a thousand different types of it. Some of it has a Middle Eastern influence, like El Pastor, which is almost kind of like a rotisserie taco. There's a lot of shit that they're doing. You know, when you say taco here in the United States, you're thinking of the fucking Taco Bell. You know what I mean? The fucking no. What they're doing which in is, Mexico? Okay. What they're doing in Mexico is a whole nother world. They're having two taco shells on the taco. Shell the taco well, with the co- shell with the cop. Structural integrity. With stru- yeah, with it. And then they have <laughs> some kind of meat on there and then they pour gravy on it. It doesn't always have to have any kind of cheese. A lot of times it doesn't have cheese. And Mexicans don't like vegetables. They kind of say vegetables suck. So it's mostly meat and fuck it. meat with a, some kind of sauce inside of them. That is tortilla. one thing I learned from that Taco Chronicle show that Mexicans was on Netflix. Like, I'm like, man, I like veg. I like vegetables. Yeah, they don't like vegetables that much. Not you really. You gotta understand Mexican culture. This goes back to the fucking at era of the Aztecs when they were vegetables are people. for pussies. Vegetables are for fucking pussies. <laughs> They're cutting motherfuckers' hearts out on top of them t- temples and stuff. They also eat people. You know, I mean, they're cannibalistic. You know, the, even the Spaniards sure. saw that. They're into making another motherfucker meat. That, that's that's some macho shit right there. So, uh, well, like, I'll, yeah. Okay, I'll admit That's that. some macho shit right there. That's how serious they were about meat. Probably, this is what I'm thinking. There's no reports of them actually raising things like cattle. They didn't have cattle. They might have had alpaca and yama, okay? Things like that. But I imagine probably humans so, tasted better than those. Well, the way I'm seeing it is probably the pre-Spaniard era, meat was the the food of royalty. So it took priority over everything. Sure. Poor people ate vegetables. So they, it gave yeah. them meat lust. That was some ghetto shit. Yeah, yeah. That was ghetto shit. So it gave them meat lust. And, you know, they were warlike. You know, that's what made them Mexicans. Mexicans were fucking warlike, you know. These, they, they were badasses. And they had ritual combat, ritual sacrificed. 
It's like, court, I'm not only going to kick your ass, I'm also going to eat you. Gonna eat, yeah, and then they kick him down the temple stairs, and none of that shit went to waste. This is according to fucking Spaniard witnesses. Well, they said they didn't waste any of those people that they sacrificed. So it's kind of like recycling the population. You know what I mean? Sure, I understand. You're that. trying. So sure. the Spaniards came, they showed them, you know, they brought the pigs with them. And, and that's how that got into the Spanish diet. So in a way, the Mexicans were so badass, the pig was a replacement for human flesh. Well, that's why they call because humans it, long pig. Yeah, long pig, right. 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 So I'm not so hardcore that I'm going to taste a human. <laughs> well, it depends on what human you're but, talking but about. But I do, I do it have... It depends on what... Like, if you presented me yeah. with a steak... Of yeah. someone, and you said this was someone that yeah. I particularly disliked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would eat that. Now, I grew up in California back that. in the 70s. Back, my neighbor fucking, he, my neighbor. If it was, was a shitty person, I would eat yeah. that. Yeah. My neighbor sure. was, what, what really what impressed on me, his name was Emil, and he was Mexican American. He was, he was what they call Chicano. He lived right next door to me. He was, he was older than me. He was like 19. All right. And I was like fucking seven or eight. And he had this badass love van, okay, that they had oh back God. in the seventies. Remember those? Yeah, I remember. That's you put a chick in the van. And you have it's like a rolling motel. Did it have like carpet on the? Had like, carpet walls on the ceiling. Or... It had yeah. carpet on the ceiling. That's it had, what I was imagining. Right. Well, on the sides of it, it had airbrushed pictures that covered the whole thing of a fucking <laughs> Aztec dude with a fucking Aztec woman. He's holding her up on top of a temple with a fucking dagger, like he's gonna fucking stab her. Oh my god! I love yeah, it. he had it on either it. side of it. Oh, the and that was that was my first impression. You know what I mean of Mexican okay. culture. All right. And the shit looks sexy as fuck. You know what I mean? She was all sure. laid out. He's up there like Conan with a dagger. Sure. Getting, yeah, yeah. So, shit was macho, man. He was cool though. I like that dude. He was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, his dog attacked me. He saved me from his own dog. Which so he was what? Right here. It was yeah. The dog wasn't. Dog wasn't mean. It was a big old Labrador, and I was a little kid. You know what I mean? The dog in... wanted to eat you. No, the dog was playing. Okay. Knocked me over and stuff. You know what I mean? It was mauling. You know, you know how dogs do. You know, and he runs up, fucking grabs a dog, pulls a dog off me. That's when I was about five. Oh, that's you're a baby town. Yeah, I was baby. Yeah, that's how I remember that one. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I remember that damn. And it was an orange van. With that fucking mural on the side of it. Man, the 70s. Yeah. I remember like his molester vans. And yeah, and I'm, the thing is, is that he was Chicano. He was part white. His mom was Mexican. His dad was white. I remember his dad, like, I remember his dad. His dad was a World War II veteran. He had those damn tattoos all over his body. He had the two Blue Jays coming down on his chest and the anchors all over his hands yeah, and all sure. that. And he wore the tiki fucking. Uh, you know, had a tiki theme in, uh, out in his backyard, and ha he wore the fucking um, uh, Hawaiian shirts. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that was he was thing. one of those guys. That was a thing. Yeah, I remember all that. <laughs> California was a fucking hell of a place, and I was well, a kid, man. It was a different time, yeah. and like I said, Florida had a little bit of that shit too. Yeah, we were like the redneck version of that. Yeah, you know. Anybody remembered a movie called The Van? I don't know. Probably. Why do like child molesters always have a van? Cause you got all this fucking. All right, my drink's empty. All right. The drink's empty already. Want me to get you another one? Sure. Hold on, I'm reading it. Get I'm sure it's. You. I'm sure it's a bad idea. I'm just reading what stage. people are saying. Okay. But, you know, whatever. Probably I can't, uh, I'm just going to put ice in mine. <laughs> I can't take any more. Oh I my made God. my shit strong. What a wuss. All right, so what happens? So at this stage, where the fuck was I? So John Holmes actually ends up spending 110 days in uh, jail for contempt of court because his thing was that he kept stringing the police along like i know some shit they're like oh yeah you know some shit and he's like just kidding so it was kind of like that kind of situation so they kind of like put him in jail for a while but he got out 
There was a three-week trial. He gets acquitted because there was insufficient evidence, which, okay. Because, like I said, his wife, Sharon, did not come out until much later and say that, hey, he showed up in my house the morning of the murders and he was covered in blood. Sorry, I forgot to mention that at the time. But I don't blame her because thank you, Victor. Thank, thank you. you, Victor. Flash Thanks, bulbs. Victor. Give me a flash bulb. Like, I kind of feel like... I don't know. I'm conflicted about Sharon. Because I don't know why, like, she married John Holmes before he became a porn star. Okay. So I guess she had every reason to expect that he would just be like a normal dude and like he would have a normal job and like life would progress in a normal fashion. So I kind of feel like when he came to her and said, hey, I've discovered what I want to do. I have a giant dick and I'm going to exploit that. And she was like, hey, that makes you a whore. And he was just kind of like, hey, not having that. And he just went and did it anyway. And she was like, yeah, bye. Out of here. So I kind of feel like that whole shit happened. And it's really weird because every time I've ever seen like, um an interview with her she seems really not like somebody that would be married to John Holmes in the situation that you would imagine she seems like um a really hmm how can I put this without being offensive she seems like a very like uh uptight kind of lady and I'm not saying that in like a derogatory way because I would be like pissed off if like somebody said but hey I'm gonna be I'm gonna do porn and I'm just like okay but she kind of like seemed like very um uptight in a lot of ways Had to let beige in. She's where's in. where's Pookie I haven't go she's probably underneath the car I have to go check I don't have check. time for that though I'm doing the show um Oh, you want me to go out and look for the cat in the middle of the show? No. Ain't that but... something, people? She's like, fuck you, Tom. Go out there and go look no, for the I cat. No, I just asked. I just asked. She's, yeah. I she's didn't say that. I just okay. said, do you no, know no. where she is? No, I didn't see her. Pookie runs around on the front yeah. porch. She sits under the cars. She hides yeah. in the neighbor's bushes. Yeah. Lately, since the weather has been cooler, relatively, because yeah. it's Florida. So it's like not as horrible as usual she will go down to like the little lake a couple yards down and sit there looking for frogs but I'm kind of like worried because I don't know alligators they tell me to go save the cat there's not the cat isn't in any in, in, in the cat is not in any danger she better not be no no it's safe neighborhood but alligators did you hear that a boom that, was that fireworks? It sounded like fireworks. Is it a holiday? Why would they? No, it's not a holiday. Maybe that was the space program. I don't know. That sounds like... Yeah, it's fireworks. Fireworks. Why are they left now fireworks? I don't know. All right. What are you asking me for? I don't know. <laughs> Tila's saying she's loving this stream. <laughs> Tila, the, the alcohol is starting to crash down on us, so the fucking whole show is starting to ground to a fucking halt. How much is left on the show, Jenny? Well, that's what I mean. It's like, it's not much, so it's fine. Uh, okay, all right. So we got most of it I out told of the way, you, right? I like, I, I talked about the murders. Yeah. Yeah. Look, everybody, okay. Yeah. Everyone involved. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Everyone involved got okay. horribly brutally bludgeoned to death by right. hammers all right, and yeah. iron bars. All right, yeah. Yeah, you got But it. I feel like everyone's not that <laughs> upset about it in the same way that they were upset about the Manson murders. Well, it's just criminals. For example, it's just criminals. because <laughs> they were drug dealers. And yeah. also because, like, David Lynn, people like that. Thank you, Victor. Because Jenny is going to finish this show no matter what. That's right. Yes. That's what I fucking do. I don't even care if I'm incoherent. Thank you, Victor, man. You give all kinds of flash bulbs. I will not remember this shit tomorrow. 
I will wake up tomorrow morning in a yeah. panic because I'll be like, what the fuck did I say? Did I post this on Instagram? Did I do yeah. it correctly? <laughs> because that's what I do every Sunday morning. People, she's getting fucked up. That's she's what I do every Sunday up. morning. She's getting fucked up. I get alarmed because yeah. I feel like I forgot some shit. Yeah. Start plugging a book. Because that's what I do. Oh, shit. I forgot plug to mention book. that. Yeah, I yeah. Plug a book. That. Yeah, I told you. So I meant to mention that in the yeah. at the beginning of the show okay, like, yeah. while we were doing shout outs. All right. As I may have mentioned on another show, I've been like doing because I wrote some novels like years ago and I've been doing like audiobook versions of them. So one of my novels, The Five Poisons, I have just recently redone a print version and an ebook version, which are both now available on Amazon as of today. I also did an audiobook version of it, but I only just uploaded that today, so that usually takes like two weeks before it shows up because they have to like go through their like quality control or whatever. So that will be up eventually. But I did like I corrected all the shit, I did a new layout, I did a new cover, I did all that shit. So that is up on Amazon now if you look on my fucking author page and an audiobook version of that novel for the first time ever will be available yeah. probably in a couple of weeks. Fiction. Yeah. You guys will love it. That's a fiction novel. <laughs> yeah. I write fiction too. All right. Yeah. I still have two more novels I got to do for that show. Like uh-huh. novels that I wrote years ago that I still need to do. And she works all day, every day almost. <sighs> yeah. I'm so tired, you guys. I know. But you know, <laughs> I'm tired, but I get a lot of shit done. So it's, I have satisfaction, sort of, but I'm also tired. Saria is asking, how do you get the books, Jenny? It's on um, Amazon. Amazon. Go on Amazon. Jenny Ashford. Search Jenny Ashford. Yep. All her books are there. All my author page shit. Yep. Yeah. Like, I did a first version of The Five Poisons back in 2014, I think it was. But I just did a second edition. I corrected all the mistakes. I did a new layout, and I did an audiobook version. But the yeah. audiobook version will not be available for yeah. a couple of Yeah, and if you join Audible, your first book is free. Somebody said that. Yep. That is true. Mm-hmm. And also, also, not like, thank you, Hayden. Thank you. You are awesome. I'm not like making anybody do anything. But if my book is the first book that you like sign up for right when you sign up for audible i get a bounty yeah i think it's like 50 bucks it's either 50 or 75 they yeah. might have like up to right. the 75 yeah if point. you join audible i'm not saying like i don't i'm not saying you, if have you to join do audible audible. And, audible and your first and, and your first purchase is Jan, jenny so you're joining because of her she gets like 50 to 75 bucks bounty yeah, yeah. which is that's the way it was you're still getting bounties yeah, as okay. far as I know. Okay. Like I said, I have so many up now. Right. But that's the thing. It's like, I did that, and then the next book that I'm working on, I'm going to do, I'm doing another five, uh, another uh, Faceless Villain. Yeah. This one is going to be Unsolved Murders from 2000 to 2005. Yeah. Also, it will be Disappearances. Right. Right. Also, there will be cases that were solved from the other cases that I wrote about in the old books that were solved from 2000 to 2005. I have two chapters of that shit written. Yeah. So I'm like, that's the next thing I'm working on. But I'm trying to get this fucking cookbook done, too. Michael says, will Jenny be able to finish that drink tonight? I'm telling you, no. She won't be able to finish that. I will, but I will be sleeping. She's hammered, yeah. I will be sleeping. So... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> is it really only quarter to eight it's only i know yeah no it's not even eight o'clock yet yeah i'm just glad i got like well it's a three-hour hour show though i'm glad i got most of this fucking case done yeah three, so three hour show. as i mentioned earlier there is some controversy over what involvement that john holmes had in this whole fucking shit okay at the very least he knew about the shit, and he let the gang into Eddie Nash's house. At the least. 
Although, investigators suspect from later evidence that if he didn't participate in the Wonderland murders, he was at least there. Mm -hmm. Whether they made him, you know, hit somebody with a pipe or what, I don't know. But his wife said later, after he died, that he came to her house in the very, you know, shortly after the murders occurred and said, look, he was covered in blood. He was freaking out. Um, and he said he'd seen a bunch of, he'd seen some murders. So I don't know. So he was at least knew about it. Right. I'm just saying. So what ended up happening, um, six years after now, John Holmes was actually brought to trial for these murders, but he was acquitted. There wasn't enough evidence. They found his palm print, but like I said, you know, he had been there a bunch of times buying drugs or whatever. So it's like nobody's gonna... So six years after he was acquitted, he ends up dying of AIDS. Now, as I said earlier in the show, he had been in, uh, you know, a lot of porn movies earlier, but because of his cocaine addiction and his subsequent impotence he had been kind of blackballed by a lot of porn uh, producers so he ended up like being in some gay porn and then he went overseas to be in porn in Italy and whatnot without telling them that he had AIDS so you know special but he ended up dying of uh, at a VA center in March of 1988 now, some detectives did actually hear that he was dying and they came to his bedside to see if he would give some, like, deathbed confessions or some shit like that. But that ended up not happening because he was, like, essentially, like, incoherent. And he didn't really say anything about being involved in the shit. Now, later on, though... Eddie Nash, who, as I said, was suspected of being involved in a lot of murders, drug deals, all kind of shit, going back from the 70s, 1980s, but they couldn't really hold him on anything. But I guess authorities have been kind of like watching him for all this time. So in uh, 1980 or in 1990, rather. Eddie Nash actually did get charged in, thank you, Aaron. Here's for Jenny to finish her drink. Oh, I don't think that's a good idea. Because look at, look at how much of this shit I got. It's a whole. You got a lot of shit. I know I do. So 1990, Eddie Nash gets uh, dragged into a California state court um, on the charge of having planned the Wonderland murders. Um... His bodyguard, Gregory Diles, was also charged as a participant because allegedly, I can't really say like, because allegedly, allegedly, like nothing's proven, but people speculate that Gregory Diles was involved in the shit, that he was one of the people that did the shit. So he also got charged as a participant in the murders. Now, another person that testified against them, interestingly was Scott Thorson, who, if you don't know, was Liberace's uh, boyfriend for a long time. Now, Scott Thorson was a dude that hung out at the Wonderland house, like, for a while. Like, he hung out, like, in that scene because he was a drug addict also. And um, so he was kind of, like, was kind of this dude that was, like, hanging out at Nash's house. And they're, like, we're, we're doing some, like, criminal shit, so you need to leave at this point. So he kind of knew that something weird was going on. So he did actually like testify against them like later on. So he testified in the trial in 1990. However, um, the trial against Eddie Nash and Gregory Diles ended up being a hung jury, 11 to one. Now, the reason that this happened was allegedly because Nash had paid one of the jurors several thousand dollars to, like, fuck up the shit. Right. Swing the jury for him. Sure. Right. So that's kind of what ended up happening. So he got away with shit for a very long time. 
Now, in 2000, uh, after a four-year investigation, this was various local authorities, various federal authorities, they were trying to, like, get this dude because they knew he was doing something. And they were trying to get him on something. So finally, in 2000, Eddie Nash gets arrested and he is indicted on federal charges um, under the RICO Act. So they basically accuse him of running a drug, drug trafficking ring, money laundering, yada yada. And they also charged him with conspiring to carry out the Wonderland murders. Because, like I said, for decades it had been speculated that he was the one that masterminded the shit because he was so upset about being humiliated during the holdup, you know. You're right. Of that, even though no one got killed during that shit. Right. During the holdup. But he was like so humiliated, it's like, I'm just going to kill everybody because that's just how I roll. Hmm. So everyone suspected him of that, but they didn't have any evidence of it. So finally in 2000, they accused him of it. And at this point, Eddie Nash is in his fucking 70s. And he had emphysema. He had a bunch of other, like, health problems. So he finally, you know, they do the trial. He finally admits, he's like, look, it's like, all right, I I did some shit. Like, I bribed the dude in my last trial. Okay, fine. You got me on that shit. So... They made him agree to a plea bargain. This was in 2001. Um, and he said that he had bribed the one person that ended up in him being a hung jury. He had given her $50,000 and he admitted to that. So they got him on that. He also pleaded guilty to the RICO charges, like, you know, the racketeering shit. And he admitted to money laundering, but he would not admit to being uh, a party to the Wonderland murders. Um, But, you know, he said that he said that, well, we wanted to get, like, stolen property back from the Wonderland murders, but we didn't, like, do anything about the murder. Like, he wouldn't say anything about that. So he said, well, like, maybe they were trying to, like, go in there and, like, violence ensued, but I didn't have anything to do with that. That's basically what he said. So, he basically ended up getting a four and a half year prison sentence, and he got a quarter of a million dollar fine, and that was about it. Like, he basically ended up Hmm. dying. Like I said, John Holmes died of AIDS in 1988. Um, You know, Eddie Nash is also dead at this point. Didn't really serve a great deal of prison time. Um... As people with a lot of money tend to do. You, he was one of the ones that died in the damn AIDS apocalypse then. He did, yeah. Because that's about the time a lot of them died. Well, it's and it's weird because I'm not really sure when John Holmes got AIDS. Yeah. Um, I feel like... Because as many people said in the, um, in the comments, he had done porn. He had done... Uh, reportedly over a thousand porn movies. So it's quite, I mean, because AIDS at the time had what, like a 10 to 15 year, um, you know, you died in about 10 to 15 years. Right. You know, it it wasn't like something that showed up immediately. Yeah. And they didn't really have good treatments for it. Well, not back then. No, not back. It was a death sentence. Yeah. Which I think a lot of people forget nowadays. but It took a while to die from it, though. It did. Yeah. But the thing is, I think people... I don't know if people, like, associate it with his time because he did, like, do gay porn later. But I don't know if that's when he got it. He might have got it earlier because I do kind of feel like he did gay porn, like, like later on in his life. Probably, like, get, after. Probably, probably got that shit earlier. Chances are... He I kind of feel like he might have got it earlier. He was probably doing some prostitution and shit before all that happened. That has been speculated. That's sure. probably what really Well, happened. because the thing about John Holmes, like I said, he's like not... Before I started looking into this case, 
All I knew about the dude was uh, like he, he was had sick. a giant cock and he was like in a bunch of porn movies. That's basically all I knew. But he was selling ass. He well, yeah. He was selling ass, probably. He was not um a model citizen. No. Let's say that. And and like I said, that's not because he did porn because I'm not judgmental about that. You want to do porn, that's like up to you, but he, there was a lot of other stuff. That yeah, he, he was like um, a really bad drug addict, and he got into he got involved in a lot of like criminal activity. Yeah. To support that drug addiction, and also after he knew that he had AIDS, after he was diagnosed with having AIDS, he very deliberately went overseas to be in other porn movies in another country where they did not know that he had AIDS. And knowingly exposed other people in other countries to the AIDS virus. Yeah. So, I can't feel too bad for him. I'm just saying. That's yeah. That's shitty. So, is, um, is that it on the case? Is it wrapped up? Pretty much. Why? You want to talk about some other shit? No, that's about it. We're going to make some fucking food, man. We've been doing the show for three hours. My drink is so full still. Man, you're not gonna be able to finish that drink. You're gonna be. You're gonna put. You that, wanna bet me? You're gonna. Be, you're gonna have that shit up on the nightstand, fucking watching movies. You won't be get through that shit. You're gonna pass out. I know how you are. Well, I probably I know will how pass she is. out. I will I probably will pass out. All right. If you wake me up tomorrow, I'm gonna be so mad. <laughs> you woke me up Growth. this morning. <laughs> oh my god. Growth. If you guys were not here at the beginning of the show. <laughs> that shit was fucking funny. Yeah. Why? Why do you talk? <laughs> I was fucking stiff, man. I was fucking worried about it. I was fucking growing back. You go in there, you go fuck up muscle tissue and that grows back. And I fucking was thinking that I was in and out of sleep. It was like at the edge of it and I was like, growth. Got up. Well. As I was waking up. Yeah, well, okay. The thing about me and I felt the thing. stiff as a fucking board, The thing man. about a lot of people is that, one, I feel like crap when I wake up. Yeah. Okay? I'm old. It happens. Yeah. And I just feel like I don't feel the need to make a lot of noise, like, while I'm doing that. I don't, like, yeah. have to talk to the room at large. I don't have to talk to my uh, your, my tablet. But you do talk to... You, you talk to shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the problem? <laughs> You're going on, and I'm going. What's the problem? You know that's how that's that's how. Joy it Joy is. says, "What is Jenny's drink? It is vodka and apple, and juice. apple juice. Yeah, I mean that made that shit pretty strong. I'm out of orange juice. Yeah, because I didn't bother. But that, apple that's... juice is actually okay because orange juice is. A, I love orange juice, but it's a little bit acidic. That's half vodka, or one third vodka. I figured as much. Yeah, about one third vodka. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that shit's pretty strong." Aaron says, Tom can go cook and Jenny can stay and drink with us. Okay, fine. Fine. I gotta fuck start heating up pans. Go heat up some pans. Okay, all right then. You <laughs> I'm fucking starving, man. I gotta cook. I'm gonna try to cook. He's taking his shit away. I gotta take my shit away. He's I'm taking fucking, his shit away. Taking my shit away and I'm gonna fucking um, heat the pans. And get us Victor some. says, you go guys- find Pookie. Yeah, that's right. I gotta find Pookie too. You yeah. guys have a good night, man. You but really Jen, should Jenny go. Will shut, Jenny will shut it down for you. You go shut. Go find Pookie. Look at this shit. He left me here all by myself. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, uh, uh. So yeah, did you guys see this movie? Seriously, because I saw Boogie Nights. Apropos of nothing. In the theater in 1997. Thank you, Victor. I think we're alone now. I know. I get you, Tiffany, with them all. And, like, I got that it was, like, probably based on some real shit, but I didn't really look that much into it. And then, maybe, like, a few months ago, somebody suggested, why don't you do the Wonderland murders? And I kept looking into it, and it's like, yeah, that sounds cool, but it's like, oh, it's a bunch of drug dealers that got killed. Hmm. And I was like, I didn't want to do it. But then, like, the more I looked into it, the more fascinating it was. And then I watched the movie. I saw the movie that uh, was on Tubi. 
And I was like, man, that's a really good movie. It's like, it's a really interesting story because there's like all these fucking tendrils. And I was like, I got really into it. And I tried to like tell him about it. And he was just like, "Mm -hmm. whatever. I don't really care. So it's like, I don't know. Like I really got into, even though I'm not a big fan of, because I write about unsolved murders. I write about, oh my God. What the fuck? Okay. There's fireworks going on outside the window. I write about unsolved murders and I understand that people are more interested in murders that the victims are like just innocent. Like I said, because it's kind of like a thing where, you know, the Manson murders, it was just like people just hanging out in a house and then all of a sudden like people came in and like started slaughtering them. So I understand that like it didn't make the same impact as something like that because these people they got murdered in a horrible way I mean that I wouldn't wish on almost anybody let's let's say that but I wouldn't wish that on most people um but I feel like it doesn't get the same attention because the dudes or the people that got killed were also kind of criminals so people don't you know, it doesn't have the same impact and I get that. But at the same time, the fact that these people were like murdered in like such a horrible, it's, it's not like they just, it's not like people just came in and like just shot them. People came in and very systematically just bludgeoned these people to death with hammers and pipes and shit like that. And I'm not sure as shitty as some people are. Um, I'm not sure that that's like something that I would advocate And it. Like, I'm not saying that I wouldn't advocate that for anybody. Cause some people like, I wouldn't mind seeing that done too, but these people were shitty, but you know, okay. Well, hey, Pookie came in. There's Pookie. Pookie's here, you guys. Come up on the show. Come on. Come on. Come on. No? Come on. Oh, Pookie's coming. Kapook. There she is. Hey. Look at I knew Pookie was coming. <laughs> what do you have to say about the show, Pook? Listen to him. Yeah? Look at her. Look at her. Pookie! Oh, and she's <laughs> she's sitting on the keyboard. All right, so I know you guys want to see me finish this shit, but uh, yeah, like I'm a, this is a case I'm very conflicted because I feel like getting beaten to death with a hammer or an iron pipe, that's fucked up. Bye. Like, I get that's fucked up, but... And I don't want to side with, like, a fucking... With Eddie Nash, who was obviously also a bad guy. Like, everybody in this is bad guys. So it's like, you don't really know where your loyalties lie in this shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's not... But, that said... I'm glad that someone um, suggested this because this was a fascinating case. And I also got to see the movie Wonderland from 2003, which for some reason I completely missed. Even though everybody was in the shit. Val Kilmer was in the shit. Janine Garofalo, who I love, she was in the shit. She was playing Joy Miller. Fucking... Uh, the, sh- the chick from Friends was in the shit. Everybody was in the shit. And it was a really good movie. I'm just saying. Tom left me. Tom left me. 
So I guess I'm wrapping the shit up because he left. So. <laughs> Was he real? Okay. <laughs> Ken says, chug, chug, chug. Oh my God. Don't make me pole dance. Oh my God. Don't suggest that kind of shit. I can't do that. I can't do that right now. Thank you, Mango. <laughs> I'm lovely. Thank you, Ken. I'm like, um, obviously inebriated right now, but what are you going to do? Tom left me all by myself so he could go cook something that's hopefully delicious. Sydney says, I never noticed how drunk y'all got until I'm drunk watching this. Okay, you guys don't even, like, right now, we live in Sanford, which is a suburb of Orlando. Right now, there are some explosion noises. <laughs> Like, outside of my window. Pretty sure it's fireworks, but I'm not really sure what they're for. I don't know if this is a holiday that I'm not aware of. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Zach, seriously. Today's been shitty for me, but y'all made me feel better. To well, thank you. What's the matter, Zach? Seriously. I thought that was Tom making all that noise. Well, you would think that that was the case. But, honestly, now that I think of it, okay, you guys. Somebody was supposed to come and pressure wash our house today. I called the front gate and everything, and I don't think they ever showed up. I don't know. I don't know. They never came. I've tasked Tom, though, because he was handling that shit. He came in earlier and was like, hey, like, the people that own our house, which we rent, by the way. But, like, they want to pressure wash the house. And I was like, okay, fine. And I called the front gate and told them to come in and pressure wash it. And then they never came. So. I don't know. I don't know. Pressure wash? Like, I don't know, man. I don't know. They need to, like, fucking pressure wash the shit because, mm, but nobody ever came. <laughs> nobody came. Gross weather. Zach says, gross weather. Guy was into ghosted me. I can't get some shit from my shark home. I know. Like, Zach. You gotta like, man, you gotta like, not like a bunch of shit happens and it's, I don't know. I, I try to like not get too wrapped up in overarching kind of shit because it's not gonna here, Thomas, go uh, go in that kitchen. <laughs> I hear noises out there. He's cooking.
Where is Dennis at? Um, he's back there on the shelf. Tom only does Dennis on very special occasions. <laughs> um, I'm not actually sure what Tom is cooking. I'm not really sure what he's doing out there. He opened the door. Pookie came in. She had a, a moment. I don't know what's going on out there. This is my... This is my office. And this is my... Entire world, pretty much. Don't break Dennis again. Yeah, his head broke. Um... Tom fixed it. But... I'm still kind of worried about it. And also... Ken, who is in the comments. Also sent us an H.H. H. Holmes figure. Which I'm kind of into. It's super cute. Am I still going strong? I feel like oh, this is my third drink. Well, I shouldn't say third because, oh my goodness, look at this. Tacos. Look at this. Look at Tacos. Tacos. I can't see it brought to me. <laughs> He's like, the thing about Tom is that I'm all like creative person, like, oh, I'm, I'm laying books out. I'm like writing books and stuff, but he's creative, like in the cooking sense, which I'm not super good at. Thank you, Victor. <laughs> well, you know. I'm going to eat this shit. I'm going to eat this shit. Everybody wants, like, Sophie back on the show. She needs to come back down here. She needs to come back down here. <laughs> I'm not eating on the show. Is he coming back in here? Is he coming back in here? Okay. How long is this shit on? I will. I will. You guys. I don't know if he's coming back in here. I keep waiting. I keep waiting. <laughs> I keep waiting. Everybody says keep eat. Okay, I'm gonna eat. I don't like eating on TV. I'm just saying. Ooh, super hot. These are very good tacos. <laughs> <laughs> These are super good, actually. I have to tell you. 
I never know what he's going to make, but it's always a surprise. He comes in, he's like, hey, I made this shit. Like, all right, I'll eat it. Super delicious. <laughs> now I wonder if he's coming back. <laughs> mm. Are you guys like feeling that shit? I'm chewing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man you guys Zach seriously Just, um, just so you know, I don't endorse that, <laughs> but we want to, you can. Because seriously, he made me do like bit shoot and... I'm not, I'm not about it. So, if you want to join Parlay, okay, but that's his thing. That's not my thing. I'm, I'm just telling you right now. It's not my thing. So. What true crime are you following now, if any? Um. How was your Halloween? I missed it. Oh my god. We had like a good show. We. Uh, I was trying to talk about Halloween murders. We got like super fucked up. We were eating candy. We had one trick or treater. She was like, um. Maybe 13. She was dressed like Wonder Woman. It was awesome. Um, we gave her candy. But other than that, we didn't get any trick-or-treaters. So. That was our Halloween. It was a good show. Tim says, will you be writing any more true crime? But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing another, um, Bixless Villain book. It'll be 2000 to 2005, maybe. And I'm going to do murders. I'm going to do disappearances. I'm going to do shit that was solved in the 2000s from all the shit that I did previously. We'll see how it works out. Hopefully next year it will come out. That's what I'm working on. I got like the first two chapters of that shit written. We'll see. But you know. Uh, Halloween show was so much fun. Well, you know, we tried. We tried. <laughs> so, he is, like, not coming back. He's not coming back. Seriously, we are... I've been working on the cookbook all day today until up until now. And I got all the layout done. I just got to get him involved in like fucking doing the shit. So
cookbooks take a long time. Yeah, they do. It's it's not taking, like, it, it's taking a long time, but once you get, like, the layout done, I got the layout done. I just needed his input on it, and that's taking a while, but... Thanksgiving food soon. I know. I'm looking forward to it, but I'm trying to eat so much. I say as I eat all this shit. <laughs> I think you seriously left me alone. I think you left me. I don't think he's coming back. Let me check though. Hold on. Are you coming back or no? Are you coming back or no? Thanks. Yeah. Calling me back to the show, huh? Calling, well, me, calling I, me back to the show. I thought you were coming back. I didn't think you had, like, abandoned me. Oh, hell no. I, I, I said shut that shit down. You, you can shut me. that shit. Man, I'm, I'm trying to eat. You're yeah, to do shit well, on so am I, but, you know. This is so good. It is good. This is so good. Well, when I, you can't fire eat, I can't eat because you left me by myself on the ship. Shut the stream down. Right. Do you know how to shut it down? I'm gonna show you how to shut it down. We had a great night. We had a great night with you people tonight. We did three hours of show. Three and a half hours. And what's that? Three and a half hours. Three and a half hours of show. And now was a fantastic time to say goodbye to y'all. You guys need to sit up in that fucking room that you have. Have a few drinks, eat a taco, and it'll be all right. But go ahead and let Jenny go. Let her go ahead and eat. See okay. you guys later. All right. Bye bye. Bye, you guys. Thank you for hanging around. Mm -hmm. I thought he was coming back. But no, he hell no. All right. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Remember, oh, like, share, subscribe, all the shit. You know, okay. you guys know. And, uh, yeah. I guess I'm alone on this shit. So, bye, you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll do a movie review tomorrow. So, bye.